don't even care. No All right, what's up, everybody? Hey! Welcome to Lights, Camera, Cocktails. Cocktails! Getting myself situated over here. My name is Jason. My name is Zenobia. A.K.A. We'll, we'll discuss later. <laughs> and good. this is Lights, Camera, Cocktails. Cocktails. And on the show, we pair amazing cocktails Exhibit with a. amazing movies. And tonight is no different. I know. That's why I'm I, so no, ready. No, I can't have it in front of me. Okay. If I'm, my whipped cream is melting. I'm ready to drink this. But first, how are you doing? I'm good. A clean shaved for you. You look great. Yeah. I love this Apparently outfit. Apparently I had some uh, hate mail in the form of Ashley on my goatee last week. <laughs> that's right. That's right. She 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 was not a big fan of it. She gave a real stank face. Clean all that shaven. <laughs> <laughs> but it, did you just come from a workout? Because you look like you've been pumping iron in yeah. the living room or something. It's not that hard. <laughs> well, I'm breaking my sons out of jail. Jesus Christ. Prop gun, everybody. Prop, it's prop. weapon. It's not real. I would never. Our armorer has already cleared it. I would never. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> but do you want to tell everyone what movie we're doing for this fall? If y'all can't tell, we're doing the Goonies, Goonies. people. Goonies. Finally. I'm so excited. Forever and ever and ever and ever. <laughs> We've been wanting to do this movie. You've got here it so is. much jewelry you know, on I got my, I like, love it. My, my pearls. I got my little beret. You should have put those in my mouth and just squeeze it all, all the way. I'd be like, oh that, my God. Is that all of them? <laughs> <laughs> okay. But I don't know about you, but... I'm ready to drink. I am ready to drink. This looks delicious. Let's get to it. Okay. We have our silent audience member behind the cameras, uh, my nephew Chris, also our number one fan. He listens to like every single episode. We appreciate you. We come here. So much so, hand me my water because I forgot to. (laughs) (laughs) Under the camera. See, he knows. That's how how much we appreciate you. You get the (laughs) horn. Okay. So are you ready to sip on... What is it? The Baby Ruth. The Baby Ruth? Ah, yes. Okay. Yes, you did. Okay. (laughs) One, I went through a lot of drinks for this movie, and a lot of them were pirate themes, which meant that a lot of them were rum. Rum. And a lot of them were, like, tropical tiki drinks. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to give a break since last week. I gave you a strong one. I wanted to give you a fun one this week. We both only drank one, and I drank, like, (laughs) half of what Smash It gave me, so... Yeah, I wanted us okay. to have a fun This one. looks fantastic. This literally looks like a um, baby Ruth, as okay. far as like the coloring and everything. So, I this house, not me, but people in this house don't really drink vodka. It's not really their liquor. How dare they? Plus, I was being lazy, and I really didn't want to buy anything for this drink. So. I was going to say, wait, what? <laughs> so, I kind of made it my own. Okay. But still kind of followed the same shit. So initially, you would have put an ounce of vodka. But okay. I didn't want to do that because we had a shit ton of Baileys and Irish cream here. I sure. thought, let's do that. So I did two ounces of Baileys, one ounce of Amaretto, one ounce of peanut butter syrup Ooh. that I made. So I took peanut butter, some sugar, some water. I boiled it. I didn't have enough sugar, so I put some honey in it. Oh, my God. And then, yeah, I it turned into this, like, slush. It's slush. Kind of. Good. I Goodness. figured it would be something different from coffee. And then I put... And you know I like my amaretto. Yeah. And then I put some cream, whipped cream in it. <laughs> Shook it up. Topped it with whipped cream. Yes. I coated our glasses with chocolate. Okay. And that, my friends, is the baby Ruth. Here we go. Baby Cheers. Ruth. Cheers, everybody. Cheers, everybody. It's so good. That's a great Christmas drink. I know we're not there yet, but fall right. You yeah, feeling it? Yeah, that's. Mm. It's that peanut butter syrup. I was very like iffy if, about it. If Starbucks served alcohol, it would be this. Right? Yeah, they could do something like this. So you can do mm-hmm. this with vodka and cream if that is what you like. But I can feel that it could be dangerous. But I figured I cut the cream out and the vodka and just use Bailey's. Yeah. And put a little bit of whipped cream. Oh, that works. So that is. I love that. The. Baby. <laughs> what the hell does he say there? Because it sounds like he says, you smell like fizzit. Fish eggs. Fish fish heads? Fish heads? It's something fish. 
Yeah. Because they're like... In the I don't know. Shit. In my ears, I always hear him say, you smell like phys ed, as in physical education, like gym socks or something. <laughs> Maybe I don't know. he's stank. He smell like stanky boys. Yeah. Maybe. Chunk, what did he say? <laughs> Maybe. I never thought of it that way. This is a dessert drink. It's so good. Okay. So are you ready? Tell me. For a little bit of her story. Yeah, yeah. On... The baby Ruth. The baby Ruth. How far are we going back? You know I come with gifts. You gonna I bring it out? It's a twofer. Yeah, so we both can have one. It don't break the same way. See, they don't make them the same way as they did in the they 80s. They don't. But there you go. You but I tried. It. You did. But there's the baby oh, Ruth. Oh yeah. All right. So let's go back <laughs> mm. to the mm. way back machine. Mm -hmm. Hold on. I got. I gotta. <laughs> I gotta talk first. I want to recreate the scene. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So let's get in our time machine. And go back to Chicago, 1920. I knew it was going to be the 1920s. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. And so Curtis Candy Company was had this candy out called Candy Cakes, which are spelled with K's. And it was like... Interesting. It was pudding. Pudding. <laughs> to say that. Okay. It was pudding okay. and peanut and car caramel. And that's what these little... Candy, candy cakes. cakes were. Nobody liked them. They didn't do well. And so the story goes. What they do well today. I don't know. Yeah. So the story goes yeah, is that it. Ruth uh, Cleveland, who was the daughter of President Grover Cleveland. Cleveland. Grover. <laughs> and he, his daughter came and did a tour of the factory mm -hmm. and... They were trying to come up with a new idea for a new candy bar, and they decided to redo the candy cake. So by taking out the the pudding and putting, <laughs> I'm sorry, I already opened it. Eat it. That's what I brought it for. Okay, so they took out the pudding and they put nougat and chocolate in it. Okay, and that's kind of what we have now. And they named it after her, Ruth, Baby Ruth. Because okay. she was their baby Ruth. So this happened, and the baby Ruth came out in 1921. And here we all thought it was named after Babe Ruth, the baseball player. Okay. <laughs> so, exactly. When I first started this, yeah, that's, that's, that's where I thought I was going. Okay. But it's so much more than that. So, Ruth, mm -hmm. Miss Baby Ruth, she died in 1904 <gasps> at the age of 12. So they didn't live that long back then. They didn't. She no. died of, of some disease, but yeah, she they died. had a lot of kids because they didn't expect them all to survive. Yeah. And she died at the age of 12 and they believe that she never came to the factory and that, you know, that whole story of naming it after her was kind of like some bullshit shit because this didn't, this candy didn't come out until 16 years after she was dead mm -hmm. and 20 years after her father had left the office. So, like, it's not like she is on everyone's tongue. Yeah, it's yeah, not yeah, like yeah. it was, it happened and they're like, in honor of sweet baby Ruth, we're going to name this after. Nah, none of that. Okay. So, basically, that is the story that they told for many, many years. It passed down to, through different owners. But historians say that this is really what happened. <gasps> Okay. Flip side of the <laughs> So when they decided to change their formula on their candy bar, they were doing it around the time when this unknown young star, up and coming baseball player, Babe Ruth, was coming up in the ranks and making records and fucking calling his shots and being fat and smoking cigars and everybody <laughs> fucking loved him, okay? He wouldn't be fat by today's standard. He's husky. Husky, but he husky for a baseball player. Yeah, a professional baseball player, not like you know the so ones. So was Barry Bonds. You know what? I, <laughs> who am I to body shame? I am so sorry, baby Ruth. I know you you dead. I'm so sorry. <laughs> so, what they say is is that the company who owned them came up to Babe Ruth and was like, "Yo, we see you. Okay. You doing your shit? We should definitely, you know." collaborate the michael let jordan us, did let us like name this candy bar after you yeah and he was like all right but this is what i'm worth and they were like you not worth that to us oh, okay so instead of calling it babe Ruth, 
They changed it up and called it Baby Ruth. Motherfucker. And they didn't pay him. <gasps> and when he tried to sue them, like, bitch, you guys are trying to capitalize off of my fucking mm-hmm. name. Off of my name. The courts sided with Baby Ruth and were like, no, it's just, you know, it's a, they, they came and they pulled that bullshit saying they named it after. Naming it after the daughter. Uh, so the daughter. Damn. And they and got away with it. you're still giving them their money. And so, <laughs> I don't even want to eat this now. You going to eat that now. Yeah, you better. So, Babe Ruth hooked up with some other company, and they started the Babe Ruth Grand Slam Bar. And it was some chocolate bar, and it was Babe Ruth's. He really did, you know, collaborate and gave his name to them. Mm-hmm. And Baby Ruth was like, uh-uh, girl, you, your name is too close to our name, and sued them and won. What? That's what I said. The story was way different than what I thought I was going to find. Yeah. And so... I'm mad. That's what they did. Another way that they became a big name off, <laughs> other than being off of the backs of a great athlete was that they made their bars five cents. When, like, Hershey, the top selling bar, was doing theirs for 10 cents. So this also made, like, Hershey and them have to, like, bring their prices down mm-hmm. a little bit. Because, Race to the bottom. Mm-hmm. That's capitalism. Uh-huh. And not only did they do this, but Baby Ruth, they would fly over big cities, and they would parachute down little tiny Baby Ruths with little silver parachutes uh-huh. over the city, and they'd fly down. And then that was, like, kind of some of the gorilla advertisement they were trying to do so yeah damn that makes me mad yeah so that is a a little bit of her story on the baby ruth i didn't i didn't mean to bring us down on that i didn't didn't mean to i'm mad like (laughs) i didn't mean making money off of somebody's name and they don't get matter of fact as this story, you know what, that's an interesting segue because on this day that we are filming this podcast, mm-hmm. we have to uh, give a congratulations to our uh, actors out there who have fought for 118 days out there give on the hell, picket bitch. lines saying, no, AMPTP, you better come with a better contract. And today... They have signed a tentative agreement. Oh, yes, they did. Oh, yes, they did. Yeah. And we stand with our actors, man, because, like, honestly, they haven't had a good contract in decades. Shh, they've been they real had dick. to fight. And I'm so happy for them. I have passed by many of them, and mm-hmm. I've honked my horn in solidarity. Like, yeah, Absolutely. bitch, get your money. Absolutely. And how many times have we begged for them to get what they are Dude. owed on this fucking show? You know what I mean? So... I'm so happy. Pay for them what they're worth. Stop trying to use their face and scan them, and then never pay them again. That's some. Ooh. And the funny thing is, a, a couple years ago, BoJack Horseman, the, the show, okay. came out, and there's a whole season where he's supposed to be secretariat, but he ends up like freaking out and leaving halfway through the shooting of it. But they had already scanned his face and shit, so they did the rest of the movie with an AI of him, and I was like. That's crazy. That would mm-hmm. never. And here we fucking are. Absolutely. Here they we just fucking are. The rights to your face. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I use a Beatles song in my movie. I got to pay. You know what I mean? That's intellectual property. This yeah. is intellectual property. This is expensive intellectual property. It's very expensive. I am no cheap bitch. <laughs> okay. No cheap bitch. But. So, yeah. Congratulations to the actors for fighting and yes. uh, winning. And we got somebody in this cast that actually has been on those picket lines day in and day out. Yes. Yes. Okay. Well, before we get into all of that. All that shit. I don't know about you, but it's time. <laughs> Sorry. I tried. I was like, where's my napkin? I didn't know what that face was that you were making. It was like My pocket square. But you know, I'm I'm in sweats. <laughs> yeah, you're you're you just came fresh from a workout. Seriously, you about, you about to steal a little girl's bike on my tricycle. <laughs> All right, well, getting the sparks. <laughs> it's time for okay the motherfucking drinking, drinking game. game. Uh, yes. Let me move my candy before she steals it. Tells me I brought more. You're so stupid. She's just gonna stop me because she doesn't like me eating sweets. I thought that was uh. 
Jason's dad sneezed. Sorry, everybody. I blew the house down. What's up? The, the door swung open. What's up, Andy? This drink is delicious. Oh it goodness. is really good, right? Mm, mm, good mm. enough. It is. For me. It is mm-hmm. good enough. For the Goonies, it's good yes. enough. Oh shit, what? Uh, <laughs> okay. You ready to get smashed? Yes. With, With Smashly. <laughs> yes. Uh, this shit is, guys, be careful. Drink, well. Responsibly? Yeah. yeah. Is that, is that? Because, damn, this is a good drink. <laughs> drink it after dinner because really this good. is definitely mm-hmm. a, a dessert. But it is, it's Drink good. it next to a fire. Ooh. Wait, but does it taste like a baby A milkshake? Ruth? Oh. Baby Ruth? <gasps> You're going to run out of Samps. I, got, I can make you more. Okay. It's, it's I don't know, close. but it's damn good. Yeah. But it's good, okay. Mm-hmm. It gives the, the essence of it, right? Mm-hmm. All right. Absolutely. Let me get that. In your, are you going to put it in? No, I'm just depressed. <laughs> Save some for the rest. <laughs> Thank you, Chunk. All right. Okay, let's get into it. Mm-hmm. All right. Take a sip every time the words Goonies, One-Eyed Willy, or Treasure are said. Don't say that. Goonies never say die. Mm. They don't. I'm not a goonie, though. Ooh, you're going to drink a lot right there. I there's there's... <laughs> oh, just keep them yeah. in. Where's the treasure? You're the like, first they fucking goonie. get in there. See, and you're the first goonie, one-eyed Willie. He was. See that? See, there's those two stamps. That's Willie's. Save Take that for, that for Willie's. Willie's. Everything else, else stuff it in your panties. Right. Like, let's go. Now, that sounds like a great idea. <laughs> I would have filled up my little training bra. I was going to say, they should have. Because, mm-hmm. like, yeah. all the guys, like, their shirt. That I would have like... tied that shirt and it, mm-hmm. it tucked it into the pants and filled, like, like Smee on fucking Hook. You remember yeah. when, he, when everything was, everyone was leaving and he filled up his pants and shirt? Time for Shmee. Yeah, Shmee got his. That mm-hmm. would have been me. I would have tied up the <laughs> bottom Shmee, of my pants. Shmee, something intelligent yeah. for once. <laughs> Shmee, Shmee. What about Shmee? Shmee, Shmee. Yeah, what about Shmee? <laughs> Gold. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that would have been me. All right, take a sip every time Data uses a gadget. Nice. <gasps> Slick shoes. <laughs> yep. I like those ones. Yep. Or his bully blinders. Oh, the bully, no problem, the, guys. The batteries, batteries don't last, last so long. long. <laughs> no. Okay, the teeth, the teeth to pull them across. Yeah. Like what do they call them? Picture Chappelle? Oh, yeah, the big chick bell. Fucking... <laughs> Whatever the hell he says right mm-hmm. there. Yeah, he's got some, Dude, some good... He's saying okay. booby traps. So, booby does traps. his, That's like... That's what I said! Booby mm-hmm. traps! Quiet! God, he's So, guys. does his zip line into oh. the house, does that count? Yes. I would say yes. yes. Okay, I like that. <laughs> Keep fucking up the door yeah, and shit, Even the Dana. opening credits, when he shoots his little, like, suction cup. Mm-hmm. And it pulls him close. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I love it. Yep. All right. Hey, take a sip. Every Sample. time Chunk is seen eating. So what you just did. So <laughs> the whipped cream. Mm-hmm. The whipped cream. The ice cream. Mm-hmm. I smell ice The milkshake. Mm-hmm. The milkshake and the pizza. Oh, mom, my favorite. <laughs> yep. Okay. I like that. And the baby Ruth. The baby mm-hmm. Ruth. Oh, the ice cream that they steal from him. <laughs> he wouldn't even let him have the spoon to suck on. It's bullshit. All right. Take a sim every time Mikey uses his inhaler. <laughs> nah, who needs it? So proud of you. He does it after he makes it oh, with what's her face. Oh, uh, in the end, when they're on the beach. He's like, <gasps> yep, he's killing it. All right. Take a simp every time Mikey uses the wrong word when he means something else. That's what I said. That's what I said. You That's always contradict me. It's the retrospective. It's about the history of Astoria. Yeah. That's Sorry. what I said. I, I, was just... I just want to be real. I do that all the time. Mm. <laughs> sometimes I'm grasping for words. You know, sometimes you think you know the word, but you, when it comes out, is completely wrong. It's delude yourself, dummy. <laughs> That's, what <I> <laughs> <laughs> That's what I said. You just gotta keep going until hopefully no one notices. And if they do, you just go. That's what. I, That's what I said. You know what I meant. <laughs> do you know what I meant? Then don't be a dick. Yeah, about don't be a dick about it. <laughs> Take a sip uh-huh. every time mouth speaks Spanish. Dia de se dias. What's that? Ten times ten. You have to see si you no buen trabajo. <laughs> you have to separate your cocaine and your heroin and your weed. Always you separate always, the drugs. Always separate the drugs. We're going to keep you in there for two weeks. Sin agua y sin, sin comida. comida. <laughs> okay, Rosie? You got okay? that? Okay. Yeah. Nice so... is my middle name. I love him so much. Dickhead. So good. Uh, take a sip every time one of the boys breaks something. So What'd like you break the, this time, Chunk? Like the penis, <laughs> I didn't touch it. The, the statue the penis. Pa- the <laughs> statue penis. Um, uh, hold this. Yep. Why me, Mike? He's like, one, two, three. 
What are yeah. you doing? Yep. Okay. Also, I think it, it counts when Data breaks the door. Or the witness. Oh, the screen door. The screen I door. see Data drop by. Hi, <laughs> Mrs. Walsh. How are you? <laughs> Wait, so is anybody breaks when it or I, just yeah, any of the goonies? Anytime one of the goonies breaks something. Okay. Can't stand no more. And you fucking like. <laughs> not I, got it. It. I got it. I got it. I, got it. Oh, I, don't, I don't got it. You klutz. I hope you still got your deposit. Or is that what it says? I hope it's not a deposit bottle. I hope bottle. it's not a deposit <laughs> bottle, yeah. <laughs> Take a synth every time someone says, hey, you guys. Hey, hey you, you guys. guys. But they do say they it. Say they do yeah. say it. Yeah. A lot. Hey, you guys. Because that's what you say when you're a kid and yeah. you, the crew... The crew's meeting up at the spot. Mm-hmm. Hey, you guys, I got an idea. Yep. Why don't we just pour chocolate on the floor and l- let Chunk, Chunk eat it. his way through? He's like, all right. <laughs> That's it. It's all I can stand. And I can't, can't stand, stand no, no more. more. You're almost out of sand. Yeah, how many more? How many? I'm almost yeah, out, I'm too. Getting, I'm almost out. I'm getting goony fucked up today. <laughs> All right, I'm getting chocolate wasted. Let's go. <laughs> Let's go. Wasted. Chocolate wasted. <laughs> no, you don't need to get wasted. <laughs> All right. Take a sip every time the Fratellis are arguing. Ah, oh, I was going to say that. Oh, I got you. Well, you need my pepperoni. You want your pepperoni? Yeah. Come on. Let's kill each other over the pepperoni. Put that gun away now. I do want a pepperoni. <laughs> you always liked him better. That's right. Yeah, because she's her dick. <laughs> You're the one in jail They're and shit. They're both his son, her son. That's so? She's got a favorite. You're not supposed to have a favorite You're kid. not supposed to tell them, but everyone has sure. a favorite. She did. I know I'm the favorite. <laughs> I, I tell my parents I'm the favorite. I tell my brothers I'm the favorite. And they all agree, so. Nice. It must be true. Thank That's you. Uh, take a sip. Every time Chunk over exaggerates a story. Mm. Okay, Bran. Michael Jackson didn't come over to my house <laughs> to use the bathroom. <laughs> but his but sister, sister did. More stories, Lawrence. Yeah. No, Chef. This time I'm telling the truth. <laughs> <laughs> like the like the little gremlins that you uh, can't get wet. Well, or all what? the little creatures that multiply when you throw water on them. But it's sister. Bullet holes the size of matzo balls. <laughs> But his sister like did. This. Hey, to a kid, that's, I mean, bullet holes are b- scary and big. Yeah, yeah. This size of my head. Yeah. Take a simp every time there's a booby trap. A booty trap? That's what booby I said. Traps. That's what I said. A booty trap. That's what I said. That's what I said. <laughs> so, booby trap. In case anyone's for following us, like the Fatalis. So we can hear them coming. Smart. James Smart Bond 007, kid. not 00 negative. Not 00 negative. He saved their ass uh, plenty so of times, times with that shit. Dude, he's so brave, too. Mm-hmm. Ah! Ah! Quick thinking. <laughs> <laughs> yep, got him. Got him. Take a sip every time a dead body is shown. Jesus. That's a it's lot. a stiff! <laughs> so bones count? Do yeah. the re- does the restaurant trash count? Yeah. It's in the bag. It's it. We know it's a body, but they don't know it's a body. The same body that's in the freezer. No, it's before they go inside. Right. They see them carrying out the body and put it. They put it yeah. in the car. And they're like, I'm wondering what is in the bag. It's a body. Restaurant trash. It's a body. Take a drink. <laughs> they ain't taking out the trash. Mm-hmm. Not that time. <laughs> Alright, and I'm sorry for this one. Take oh, a simp every time Andy misses a note. Oh no. You ain't sorry. <laughs> I wonder if it's an A sharp or a B flat. Look. I ain't mad at her because <laughs> it's hard. It is hard, especially if it's not something you do all the time. The map is burnt. Also, it's I wonder. Four hundred years old, three hundred years old. Those keys are bones. They're bones. They're you gotta play color, the bones to get out of here. Like you, you define between the white keys and the black mm-hmm, keys, and mm-hmm. I'm like, I, lo- I look at what she's playing. And I'm like, how do, how do you tell? Like, is it an A sharp or a middle? B flat? No, well, like, somebody can tell because I did read that she is playing the incorrect notes that yeah. is on not only that, that but I an see. a sharp like is a b flat or yeah. something like that something like that mm-hmm. yeah so yeah i know they four you want me to remember something about four it's the 80s they don't yeah. care about shit moving it. on <laughs> okay. finish your first drink when you first taste the booze oh finish your first drink when you first meet sloth so when mikey him. first meets him you're ruining yeah. it you're yeah, ruining it's the it. First time you see him, you're just like Mom and Francis. He never let me finish anything. <laughs> oh, no more. I don't know what it means. So what it finish your second drink when Chunk and Sloth share a baby room. Oh, it's so <laughs> cute. I forgot I had this back here. <laughs> Can you make your ears move like it? Because if you did, I'll... yeah. There we go. 
I'll give you more baby rubes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. All right. Finish your third and final drink. When one eyed Willie's ship is finally free. Oh, nice. Jesus. Mary Going Mother off of into God. the horizon. <laughs> okay. I, I like, like that. that. Right. <laughs> Jinx. <laughs> you owe me a Coke. You owe me a Coke. I yeah. do like when Sloth jumps out and like opens his uh, blanket up. He's like, ah! And like, then all everybody's like, ah! Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we'll all be weirdies with you. Okay. You're going to live with me now. <laughs> <laughs> His fucking ears. I love you, Chuck. Oh, fuck. I'm going to so cry emotional. right now. Can you just stop? I fucking love that. Do you, do you have any to add? Definitely. Yeah, I feel like. <laughs> I got one. There's so go for much. It. There's so much. So I'm just going to add one, but you go first. Anytime. Goonies never say die. Yeah. Mm. Goonies they ne never say die. And that means you don't ever. Stop drinking. Okay. Because we never say die. <laughs> There's so many different ones that I can think of. Hope we not talked about enough. I don't know. Smash did a pretty good job. I mean, I, I only an mentioned Andy once. Yeah. She ain't got and too much for size. No. They're here. They're here. They're here. <laughs> I would say take a sip every time that Troy is being a piece of shit. Ugh. Troy. Troy! Like him fucking Touch that to... mirror again. I swear to God, I'm going to smack you in the He's face. He's all trying to look up her mm -hmm. fucking... I mean... Yeah, Walsh. Let us give you a little ride. He tried to fucking kill Brad, dude. Yeah, yeah literally. Literally, E.T. style, threw him off of the mountain. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and he didn't have a little alien to fly with him, so he could have died. Oh, fuck. Unbelievable. <laughs> Piece of shit. Piece Come of on, shit. Walsh. There's 50 more houses to tear down after yours. I just want Brad to get a hold of him for like five seconds. He'd fuck him up. Fuck him up. He's working out thinking the same thing. Like, oh, right? I'm going to beat the shit out of him one day. Turn Brad's mm. working out. Yeah. Ooh. Oh, that's a good one. That's <laughs> nah, only in the beginning. Though. I know. <laughs> but literally the entire time in the beginning, he's like. Yeah. Doing his shit. So. You're not going anywhere, limp lungs. I got a date with Andy on Friday. I need you to get dreams, sweaty bro. and shit. You're not sweaty enough. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. That was Where's my the job mister? on set. Mm -hmm. That's my bad. <laughs> the mista. All right. Hey. <laughs> Don't you do it. This was a fun one. That That's was a good one. Yeah. I'm out. That's it. Like, I'm already We're ready out. for my second baby. Round group. two, baby. There it is. All right. All right. I well, got a little is... bit. I got enough to cheers. 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 And that is the motherfucking drinking game. game. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> That's my fault. <laughs> Damn, that was good. And smash responsibly. Smash responsibly. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Happy smashing. Happy smashing, baby. Oh, okay. Oh my God. Before I make us some drinks. Ooh. What's up? It's time for them stats. What's the stats? You ready with the stats? Hit me with your best shot. All right. So, the Goonies dropped June seventh, nineteen eighty-five, baby. One point five eighty-five. It's the number. Okay. Another so the budget. Nineteen million dollars. That's not bad. I was expecting more. Translated into well, that's because they're children. Yeah. The majority of the cast is children. You don't gotta pay them shit. Yeah. Um, and that translated into twenty twenty three money is fifty three million dollars okay. to make this movie, which I would think would be way more, especially all of the pirate shit builds and all they that have stuff. to do. Yeah. Like for real. And it made sixty million dollars translated Triple. into 2021 21 whoa am i going back in time 2023 don't take me back to 2021 <laughs> i don't want to go back <laughs> please don't no. if anything is back to 2019 yeah, yeah. <laughs> anyway so it made um 118 million dollars in today's money okay so it made money it made sense yeah and I'm sure a lot of that, I, and that was just the worldwide. Sure. I did not see what how much it made. That's with like the the like DVD the, rentals. Yeah. Or the, all that VHS, shit. VHS. Yeah. Blockbuster numbers and oh shit. Oh my god. So I don't know Triple what the that. because I know that we rented it a lot, and I was renting it in the like mid to late 90s yeah so, like <laughs> for sure yeah you either bought the vhs or you rented it constantly so it made a lot of money yeah okay so rotten tomatoes mm -hmm. critics 71 percent. these fucking people i i ain't got nothing to say 
I don't know what the... I feel like they just thought because of the Steven Spielberg movie, it would probably be different than what it was. Uh-huh. Or, okay, I hear this a lot. Uh-huh. People love this movie because they're nostalgic about it and they watch it as a kid. But if you show it to an adult who did not grow up on it, they don't really care or like it. And they but they're not interested it. in it in the first place. I mean, I don't know. I would be, I'd be like, well, let me see this movie that everybody be quoting all the time. To give this movie a 71 is disrespectful. Oh, I'm sorry, 77. Still disrespectful. Still disrespectful. If it's not in the 90s, being that it's arguably one of the great movies of all time. And that's inarguable, you know? And yet critics want to give it a C plus rating. You know, that just says more about the critics than it does about the movie. Yes. And I just think that they're old bitter bitches. Yeah, and this exactly. movie wasn't made for, for them. reason to shit on something. But the audience, they gave it 91%. See what I mean? Yeah. It's not always about did you hit all the bullet points. The real question is, was it a fun, engaging, exciting story? Did you go on a ride? Like... Yeah, I'm not even making me mad with two stories. Don't you do? I did, whoa one. Yes, I feel bad about the baby Ruth one. I didn't know I what it was gonna too. be. <laughs> I didn't know what it was gonna be until I was already halfway through it, and I was like, "Well, I'm committed, so this is what we're doing." But the critics, you know, I knew you gonna be mad. I don't yeah, even care like, on that shit. You know, they they shit on my movies, so I'm gonna shit on them. You just take a big ass stanky shit. <laughs> but the ZZ Fresh. I'm anticipating 13% when my movie comes out. Yeah. I mean, I personally, I don't know how I get the credentials of being a critic, but like, aren't, yeah. we, aren't we? Right. So, I mean, I'll give you a high number. Appreciate I've already it. seen it. I liked it. So. And it ain't even done. And I'm even done. Hmm. Okay. But the ZZ Fresh for Goonies is. Give me it. 99%. Nice. I think it's great. I mean, I did watch it as a kid, so I do have that remembering being a kid and riding my bike down the street Mm -hmm. and being like, you guys, there's like underground tunnels in the orange groves because orange groves were all around our house. We used Mm -hmm. to ride our bikes and like fucking hang out in there and eat oranges and shit. So we we knew there was a map somewhere leading to the goal. (laughs) We just couldn't find it. And so I know that thousands of other kids did the exact same thing through all the generations. So it's, it's just a great... It's funny. It's fun. It feels super 80s. There's never a bad time to watch this movie. Yeah. Yeah. That should be like, you know, the first thing about this like rating. So I would give it like a 95 personally. Mm -hmm. It's a fantastic movie. These are all young actors. Like the oldest one is like Andy. And she was maybe 16 at the time. You know, other than, of course, the Fratellis. And they all did a phenomenal job. Spielberg and Chris Columbus did a fantastic job writing it. Um, Our director did a great job. Um, And you just, it's just a damn good movie. At the end of the day, with all its, like, little hiccups, its little goofs, you know, with like the you kind of see the shadow of a can, uh, crew person on the side of the ship, like you do. That, oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> As they're climbing up the ropes, you see somebody's arm waving by. They're like, look. We, There's so we, many like goofs and things in this movie, but I think that adds to its nostalgia. It just makes it more fun. Yeah, because it's usually the goofs are usually uh, something that the kids did. And I didn't so, know that there was that. there was like a what was it the. The kids are like running and they're like freaking out in the house and they run past the camera and you can see it shaking and they were just like, we don't care. Fuck it. Uh, Cut print. Let's go. Yeah. Yeah. I think that uh, our, is, can we jump into the director? Let's do it. I think that our director, Mr. Richard Donner, uh, who we talked about in our Scrooged episode, I think, you know, he understood that he's working with kids and uh, that the, the takes are not going to be perfect. And I think he embraced that, and that's why he was like, all right, cut, print, that was a great take, let's move on. It's probably a lot easier to just get it done than try to redo it with kids. Yeah, absolutely. You know, because these are young kids. They're like anywhere between like 
11 and 16 years old. You know, yeah. You're not the most uh, serious and professional one was uh, Key, if I'm not mistaken. Like he was on it. He took it very, very seriously and did. Well, a that's because he had just come off of doing Indiana Jones, right? Yeah, yeah. That was his first one. This was his second one. Well, I should have bought a bigger can. Oh, no. Oh, no. You got to do a whipped cream run? We might have to. <laughs> I, I, I'll, uh, I'll nurse this next. But, uh, yeah, Mr. Richard Donner, we talked about him. Uh, he did so many movies in the 80s and 90s. Um, most notably, the Lethal Weapon franchise. Oh, he yes, did he one, did. One, two, three, and four. And the fourth. Yeah. He also did uh, Superman one and two, Christopher Reeves ones. That's exactly why there is so much Superman in this. Mm. Sloth has his oh, yeah. shirt. Yep. And That's a sloth. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're in deep shit now, Francis. <laughs> and Mikey, uh, his like bed sheets are like Superman bed are sheets. Are they? Mm-hmm. Nice. Okay. Uh, and one of my personal favorites uh, that he did is a movie called Maverick with uh, Mel Gibson and uh, James Gardner. I, I am say. so sorry because immediately I was like, bitch, he did not. We just did Maverick. He not did that not. one. He did no, not. <laughs> no, not the 2021 uh, Top Gun movie. This movie came out in the early 90s. This one's about the Wild West and playing yes. poker. Yes, I do know. And yeah. they were like fucking con men. Like yeah, and it's like father and son trying father to son uh, West or... appease the same woman. Yeah, wait, who was the... I can't remember her name. Fuck, now I gotta watch At it. At the moment, I can't remember. If, if I watch it and I but get like, good feels about comedy. it again, then we should do that because you know you like Westerns and yeah. I'm picky about mine. And that's I mean, if we're going to do a Western, I'm going to do Tombstone. First. Oh yeah, that's definitely happening. And then Wild Wild West. Yeah. Oh, yes. I like that. Sadly, he did pass away in 2021. He has a star on the Walk of Fame. It mm-hmm. is located at 6712 Hollywood Boulevard. Mm-hmm. Um, some fun things that uh, you would know from him from this movie is he plays the police officer. He is. He's the ATV uh, yeah. deputy. Yeah, he's who... the one that's like, them goobers. Oh, they there they are. Oh, there they are, them goobers. That's, that's <laughs> but him. But they're here now, Ed. Whole mm-hmm. army. Yeah, that's him. He kept One-Eyed Willie's head after rapping, as well as a model of the ship. Okay, so I heard... When I Willie's skull mm-hmm. was a real skull. I heard it was. I heard it was made from real bone, but not necessarily like one person's skull. Nah, I heard that they even said a name at one point or somewhere. I, I read it or like it's somebody, somebody who died from dysentery. I mean, they pulled I don't shit like what, that back then. Don't remember what it was, you know what but I mean? yeah. So I don't know if that's true. You moved the gravestones, but you didn't move the bodies. You didn't move the bodies, bitch. And you let us build these houses on here. <laughs> Don't even, don't even. <laughs> I get so, I get so angry every they time I that kind fucking of shit watch back that. in the eighties. Um, <laughs> so he had, I, I don't think that he had the easiest time, uh, wrangling these children. Sure, there's a lot of them. They're all like you said, are an array of different ages mm-hmm. and emotions and genders, and so like it's a lot. Mm-hmm. And not everybody is the has the children magic touch like Steven Spielberg. Like, sure, not everybody could get. We it's watch together. it. We watch it happen on Abbott all the time. We get guest directors, we get our regular directors, and it's like everybody's got a different approach to handling these kids. And even our uh, AD team, like mm-hmm. wrangling these kids. Whoo! It's a thing. It's a thing. It's, it's, it's a, not for it's everybody. A talent. It is not for everybody. And so he, he definitely, I feel like lost his temper a little a couple times, Did he? or yeah. you know. <laughs> I did hear an interview and he said, quote, he was like, yeah, working with all these kids, it just makes me want to go home and kill myself. Like, oh my God. He, he, was, he was really <laughs> feeling some type of way about working on him. And so you are, kind of told me this, that the Steven Spielberg told the kids to shun him mm-hmm. uh, the last week of filming because it was like around his birthday. So they were kind of being mean little snot nosed brats and I'm sure he when they were like that's a rap he's like fuck y'all I'm out like <laughs> totally was it was done and uh 
because he was done and it was like around his birthday, he took a beautiful vacation to Hawaii. Mm -hmm. He flew out there and he with his family and shit and he had this little bungalow. But Steven Spielberg, he he a mean motherfucker sometimes. <laughs> oh yeah, he likes pranks. He, he loves he pranks. Loves pranks. And I can definitely see that in like he's probably like a one eyed Willie himself. Like, mm. you know, like be punking people. And so <laughs> he Paid for all the kids in the cast to be flown out to Hawaii and surprise him in his bungalow while Steven Spielberg filmed it all. So I did see some clips of them surprising him. Okay. And he's just like, oh, hi, kids. But I feel Looking like. at Spielberg like, you, you mother motherfucker. But I do feel like he was probably in a better head today. Sure. Because he was probably drunk. Decompressed for a week. He'd been drinking, eating some good Hawaiian food. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, not even these little snotty old brats are going to break him down. You know how much Steven uh, loves pranks? You know the story that Chunk tells yes. about puking over the side? <laughs> That is actually Spielberg's uh, story that he did when he was back in Arizona as a kid. I did read that. Fucking, and I was like, dang, you motherfucker. Dude, he was terrible. He used to uh, torment well, his sisters and stuff. One day I went to the movies and I went to the top and then I, I went to the sound, sound like, like this. this. <laughs> 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 And all the people are getting sick. Yeah, the, it was the worst thing I like ever did. Like he was fucking. You could have asked him anything, and he would have told you his mama's social security number. Mm -hmm. He would have told you the secrets in, like, about UFOs at Area Fifty One. You could have got him to talk about anything at that point. Yeah, <laughs> the poor kid. The last thing I'll say about uh, Richard is uh, he is unaccredited for some voiceover work in this movie, also. What did he do? He started laughing behind the camera when Chunk gets the spoon to stolen. If you listen real closely, as Chunk is sitting there crying, you hear somebody laughing in the background. That is our director. And I always thought it was like either the sound he's making as he's crying or just yeah, it's very telly faint, but you can hear laughing it. at him because they took the ice cream back. But yeah, that's that's some funny shit. <laughs> Which kid do you think gave him the most grief? Corey. You think so? Yeah. I think so. I think he is the one that, like, had the most, like, experience by this time. Well, like, so he was Sean and Josh, to... this is their first movie ever. Sean, so... Josh, Andy, or the girl that plays Andy, I should say. No, I feel like she was his... Are you sure? This was her first, yeah. And then Summer Rental. Then Summer Rental, I yeah. I fucking love Summer Rental. Mm, okay. Lucas. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, yeah. So the new kids, I feel like either they're going to run amok and act crazy, which means that we probably would have never saw them in other movies. Sure. Or they were just like scared, like, ooh, I don't want to fuck up. This mm -hmm. is the big ass like deal. Yeah. I mean. But Corey, he was like already in here. Sure. This is the second Steven Spielberg movie. He's already out here just doing the shit he is the it kid mm -hmm. so i'm sure and his parents weren't like the best parents so he was out no here they doing... weren't like they pretty much dropped him off yeah they were like i hear they go make you a big boat here you go have fun i'll yeah. be back in three months we talked about that on the standby on me the standby episode. me yeah so yeah. i would say Corey. we could talk about miss carrie green uh since we already just jumped on you know her first three films okay you know I don't have... Which I would argue are her best. Like What are the she, first three? The first three are Goonies, yep. Summer Rental, and Lucas. Yeah. Those are like, you know, she was that like uh, stereotypical uh, pretty girl next door of the 80s thing. It was like her and Molly Ringwald. She, she, she's cute. I do she like her. She has a sweetness to her. She absolutely does. And, uh... I think that she was filming either Lucas or Summer Rental right after this mm -hmm. because she is the only character that is not in Cyndi Lauper's Good Enough music video. All She's the other over there getting her there. money. She mm -hmm. didn't need the fucking... Making out with uh, Charlie Sheen on Lucas or something. Maybe... Well, Summer Rental was right after, so maybe... Is that the one that was right after? Let's see. They all came out within a span of like two years. She hit it. They were like, that it girl. Yeah, absolutely. The one that looks like a cute, innocent. Little... She's very, uh, what's the term? Um, demure. Yeah. You know. 
I liked her. I thought she was great. Head cheerleader. Andy! <laughs> you goody! You gross old witch! Are you on the play pirate, huh? Whoop! I just realized that... It probably was Summer Riddle because they came out the same year. Yeah. Yeah. Mama Fratelli mm-hmm. sounds a little bit like Cartman. <laughs> you want to play parrot, huh? What play parrot? You walk the plank. No, <laughs> Cartman sounds like her because she's That's been around. That's true because she's been around longer. I'll mm-hmm. give you that. <laughs> but you just ruined that for me. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> that just hit me right now when I was trying to do her voice. <laughs> just <laughs> Cartman came out. <laughs> he did. I didn't know he lived there, but he does. Oh, and now I'm never going to be able to unhear it. Um, I do have a fun fact. It's not about her, but it's just a oh, fun fact. I always like a fun fact. All right. Do you know where the name Goonies come from? The Goondocks. The Goondocks. Yeah. Which is the little neighborhood that they fucking grew up in mm-hmm. that they're about to tear down. And that's why they call themselves the Goonie. Yes. But as a kid, I never caught that. And I was always like, what the fuck's a Goonie? Mm. Like, where do they even get that fucking name from? From, yeah, you live in the Goondocks. In the Goondocks. Yeah. It's Which is why Andy is not a Goonie, because she's a little a you know, rich girl. Yeah. You know, what about Steph? Does I she was going to say, too? is Steph, because you see her in the beginning, she's like dunking her head in this water and just like hooking herself up, maybe. She, what, what's she doing to that? Like, is she like bobbing for apples or nah, something? No, she's just wetting her hair. She's literally just wetting That's her hair. That's not an 80s thing. You yeah. gotta use hairspray or some gel or something. Well, she's, you know, a little tomboy for the most part, also. I love Actually, her. I wouldn't call it tomboy. Like, she's just. She's a she's an outcast. I don't know. She hangs out with Andy. True. But it might be like her only friend. By choice. She's mean. By choice. That's what I'm saying. Her only friend by choice. Like she don't it seems like everybody in this town pretty much sucks. Yeah, but no, why would I don't think so. I think that she just, you know, she's angry. She's, she's misunderstood. Te- she's a teenager. Who thinks everybody sucks. They're I teen- think she thinks that she's smarter than everybody. I personally don't like her. I think she is smarter than everybody. I don't think she is. I think she's just mean. Personally, like, she's mean. She, you you don't mean. remember high school girls? They're all mean. No, they weren't mean to me. They're all little. To your face. Uh, to your face. <laughs> I'm going to leave that alone. <laughs> like, I, so, Mar- she is played by Martha Plimpton. I fucking love her. <laughs> I do. I've seen two of her movies. This one and Parenthood. And do you and, like her parent? Those, she plays no, like a no, punky teen. She plays teen. the same thing. She punky plays teen. angry. Because like, it's the 80s. Teenagers were angry. That was her typecast, I think. And, but now as an adult, she is hilarious. Okay. I fell in love and watched Raising Hope that she was in for mm-hmm. years. Four years, I think it's four seasons. I've never seen it. It's a great show. Okay. Very good show. She has great timing. I'm always glad to see her in something. Cause she's, she lines it up for me. Got you. I get the character that they wrote for her. I don't like the character because she's just mean. <laughs> like, just calling people idiots. You know? Like, it's just fucked up. You don't remember being a kid? I don't think you, I, I think you forgot. I think she's being incredibly hurtful with her words, and I think she does it on purpose. I think you forgot what it was like, like being a, a tween. I think so. <laughs> but that being said, you know. Kids the suck. The Goonies, uh, <laughs> there's something that was cut out. Kids suck. <laughs> Is that what she says? No, no. Uh, that's what Mama Fratelli Yeah, Mama says that what she like, says. She's kids like, kids suck. suck. Yeah. They do. You notice they always cut to commercial when you were a kid, uh, when it was Mama Fratelli's lines. Ooh, she has the commercial lead. She has the commercial when she's lit, got her back up against the wall and she's like, get out of here. She's like, kids suck. Cut to commercial. Or uh, when they're on the pirate ship and she like cut slices at Andy and she falls in the water and then Bran uh, jumps in after her. Mm-hmm. Mama Fratelli's like, two down. Who's next? And then commercial. commercial. Kids, you guys will never understand what it's like to watch these movies with commercials. Go on where, Tubi, you'll figure it out. With things with edited, where the, you mm-hmm. know all the cuss words were edited out, mm-hmm. and where the where the commercial breaks are going to be in. Back in the day, we used to record Prepare. these movies on VHS mm-hmm. with the commercials and all, and so you already knew where the breaks were coming in because you got to get the remote ready to get through. These and you had to make sure to record ahead of time. Like you got to give yourself a solid. 
two to three minutes to make yeah. sure that it was in focus. Otherwise, you get that snow across the entire screen. Yeah, you got to make sure that you, you got to hook up the rabbit ears. That you got it right, so you can be ready. You don't want to miss the first couple minutes. Cause no, you better have your sandwich and your chips and your soda locked and ready to go. Because <laughs> you don't got time to run back to the kitchen and make yourself something else. So you're gonna miss it. Yeah, you only have bathroom breaks and refills up of, of Kool Aid. In between commercial breaks. Mm -hmm. That's it. You get one take. <laughs> and if you were smart, you tried to cut out the commercials. So oh, yeah. You would stop, pause. Mm -hmm. Pause on the record so that you can save that extra that space and mm -hmm. for another movie. Yep. Because I would have double features of or weird music ass video shit. or something like that. You, know, <laughs> you got 15 minutes? Put Thriller on there. Put Thriller, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. What I was going to say is uh, the Goonies have an oath that was cut out of the movie it was the oath. the oath they actually all the kids memorized it okay. uh and if you watch the behind the scenes they actually right before they rap they get together and they do the oath on camera being stating that you know well it reads i will never betray my goondock friends we will stick together until the whole world ends through heaven and hell and nuclear war, good pals like us will stick like tar. In the city or the country or the forest or the boonies, I am proudly declared a fellow goonie. It was really sweet. It was very Then You guys should have like, kept that in there because then I wouldn't know what a goondock was. <laughs> I mean, they cut some things out. They cut the octopus out. The octopus was very scary. I don't, <laughs> have you seen the octopus? Yes, I've seen the octopus. It is scary for a whole different reason. Like that's scary. That's it's scary. They had animatronics. Yes, they cut it out for the right reasons. They cut it's it out just... because they beat an octopus by sticking the headphones and it jammed. It danced its way. It out. danced its way. What the fuck? Yeah, I would have really. If that was in it, it would have dropped my my score down on this. Movie. Yeah, it was very uh, in the vein of like Mac and Me. Did you ever see that movie, mm -hmm. the eighties movie? That's that's what it looked like. You know what it looked like? Mm -hmm. Boo boo. And yeah. I'm glad they cut that. But they still left the line in there. They did. Were and your lives in danger? The octopus was very scary. I always was like, he dated just making up shit, lying ass little kid. Why did you just tell the <laughs> truth? But it did happen. It did happen. But they didn't want it. They were like, we can't tell nobody about this. <laughs> and I remember seeing it when I was a kid. So I think they added it back in when they put it on TV. I did read that some Aryans on TV did have the, the octopus. But I don't. Total TJ Hooko, right? <laughs> but I didn't. I, I I don't believe I ever caught it. I saw it like on YouTube and I was like, what the fuck is this? Yeah, it's it's interesting. It's it's like a three minute scene. Yeah. You know. Worth Again, to. Steph is being a brat, and but this time she is justified because she thinks that Chunk is mess or uh, Mouth is messing it's with. It's like, like win it, yeah. And in reality, it's an octopus grabbing her leg. Yeah, I don't don't hate on her so much. <laughs> I like her. I'm not hating on Martha. I'm hating on Steph. I like both of them. I don't like Steph. <laughs> <laughs> angry for no reason. We don't know. We don't know what her one. She probably she is probably part of the Boondocks. Mm -hmm. The Goondocks. Wait, and yep. she doesn't want to be. And she don't want to be. And she about to lose her house and go to a different school too. They all should be mad. It's some, some bad time. But not at each other. Kids she, don't know how to mean express to their emotions. She's mean to everybody. <laughs> she's mad because mouth won't give her no play. She don't want fucking. Well, I, yeah, I, don't, I, I don't know about that. I think that she does. And I think she's mad that, about it. I think she's just going. She gonna wait mm -hmm. like another two years. He gonna grow a yeah. little bit, grow a little beard, like try some license to drive. Mm -hmm. Like he was cute in that. License to drive. I I would say dream a little dream. Okay. Like Corey Corey Haim is the main character in License. No, to I'm drive. just saying like. He he's gonna look like that, and then she's going. Then she really yeah. don't want to be jumping on him. Frog. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, because they have their little moment at the end. Oh, you don't look so sort of pretty. Yeah. When your face doesn't screw it up. <laughs> yeah, I don't think anyone talks nice to her, or likes her, or anything. Your voice so is kind of nice me. when your. She can't even give him a compliment. Your voice is kind of nice when your mouth isn't screwing it up. His mouth do be screwed it up, but, but he said don't... she said she looks nice. But her face be screwing it up, right? Yeah, after she said that. Like, all right, you're going to bust apple bags? I'll bust some apple bags. 
it, I'll give you a backhanded compliment. Maybe, you know, it's just a little sexual tea on mm-hmm. You know. Or I, they, I think that's what it is. Or, you know, it's just like the big little big yeah. sister, little brother. She's third wheel in it with Andy. And it sucks. She ain't getting none, and so that's why she grumpy. I see I see her whole backstory. She's going to end up with Troy's angry ass. And they're going to have some wild <laughs> angry sex. Angry ass kids. I, like, no. I don't like that. I don't like that story at all. She deserves better. Okay, so... Um, She's a goonie. <laughs> can I give you a fun fact? Give me that fun fact. Okay. Do you want to know about the treasure, or do you want to know about the water slide? The water slide. Okay. The water Whoosh. slide. It was weird. It, it was real. Smashley has openly stated many, many times why did they not make this into a theme ride. Like, it would have been genius to make this into a ride. What? Uh, where? Uh, who, where does Warner Brothers own? Do they? Is it a... Warner Brothers? Yeah. Okay. I think so. At least... Universal at Studios least, is right there. At least the the water slide and the boat and shit. Uh-huh. It's, it's, it's at Warner Brothers. So, um, okay. the water slide was real, and it was built by Fred Longford. Okay. On the Warner Brothers lot, stage 16. Have you guys ever been on that one stage? That's our stage. That's your oh, that's your new yeah, stage. That's our stage. Well then, uh, well hello. <laughs> that's exactly why I wrote it down because I was like, I feel like they've been on the stage. Okay, oh, so stage yeah. sixteen, your new stage. Ashley will be on that stage on Monday. On a month of the day. <laughs> uh, well, while you're there, you could tell some fun facts, and you could tell everyone that it is one of the biggest sound stages in the U.S. And it, they filled that motherfucker with nine thousand gallons of water. Jeez. For this water slide. Okay. And it worked. The kids really went down it. Cast and crew would end up going down it. Fuck yeah. And cast and crew also would invite their kids for after hours water slide fun oh, at the Goonies. So we didn't know nobody or else we could have been on the oh. fucking slide. And it, it was real for those people. Unbelievable. So yeah, you are uh, you're on the Goonies snail stage. At Water Brothers. That makes me very happy. Because mm-hmm. we haven't been on that stage yet. Last That's a year, new stage, right? We were, well, it's not a new stage. No, it's your... It's our new stage. Mm-hmm. So last year, we were on stage 22 and stage 8. Now we will be on stage 16 and stage 8. Yeah, but we were on 16 for you. Wow. You weren't there. You weren't there for she, that one. She wouldn't, she wouldn't let me have it. Well, you know what? You're going back, you're, and you can tell everybody you on the Goonies this sound is why stage. I drink. So there you go. I love that, and yes, it is one of the biggest stages. I mm-hmm. think it's freaking enormous. Perf. Yeah. Last uh, season, they were shooting. What's that uh, Lakers TV show on Cinemax? Oh, Winning uh, Time. Winning Time. That's what they were shooting on there uh, while we were shooting. Oh, I at bet it. they needed that stage. Mm-hmm. That's cool. Yeah. Wait, what were you saying about the the pirate ship being at Warner's? No. Okay. No, no, no. Because I got a different fun fact on that. Okay. Well, basically, as I understand <laughs> it, the pirate ship was real. Yes. Uh, and it took them uh, like two or three months to build. Uh-huh. And after they were done filming, they were offered it to like anybody that like was would take willing to it. take it. Yeah. And nobody took it. I, if I was Spielberg, I would have taken it. And putting it in your pool in the back. <laughs> Wherever. Like, honestly, if the thing floated, I don't dock it somewhere. Like, look, we, say, we say that in the now because we are so obsessed with film mm-hmm. and film history and film artifacts that, yeah, That's we, think, asset. we think of it. things that somebody you know, would have bought we it. Kept. They would have bought it now. Auction it off. Somebody would have. If Spielberg could have. If they on couldn't to that get thing, rid of it for free, you think they could auction it? They'd have to hold on. To Spielberg the- could have afforded to put it. I'm 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 saying him because I know that he's already done Jaws and Indiana Jones and like he's got enough money to put it in storage somewhere. And that then thing sell was it to massive, some bro. That thing was massive. I agree. And Dock it. Put it on. Ocean is massive. But like, dock it. But like I'm saying. Make sure it floats. Put it on the dock. People don't care like they care now. Like I heard a whole podcast about how Warner Brothers and Paramount and everybody was throwing away items from like Singing in the Rain, The Wizard of Oz. They threw the fucking ruby slippers in like trash and shit. And people 
saw it and took a bunch of these artifacts and started selling they, them and stuff the like Ruby that. Slippers are, yeah, they found them. Okay, I was and there say, were several. There's about three of them. There's one that was stolen, and there was like there's there's tons of them. So like yeah. they were just getting rid of these things because they needed space and they didn't want to use it. So thinking for back in the day, even the eighties, these things don't matter to people as much as they matter to us right now. We have the Academy Award Museum like down the sure, street. But that's like and they're holding on to things a couple years old. I know. That's what I'm saying. Because now we care. Back then I feel like they, they did, did not care. care in the eighties. Not like, enough. Not enough, but they understood the value of things. And that is too big to be just keeping mm -hmm. around for nobody to do anything. I say throw it in the ocean. And just have a ghost ship just floating around? No. Throw it in the ocean, pay the little fee at the, like, dock station, and line it on a post. It's not going anywhere. It's Los Angeles. <laughs> we don't get hurricanes. We don't. We don't. I mean, but I'm sad, I I'm sad I, it's gone. I, I would have done it. I, I agree. Done it. I'm just saying. I would have done it. But I also think that people didn't care back in the mm -hmm. day. Yeah. Sadly. It's a badass ship, though. That is a badass ship. Yeah. And you know what I know about the ship as well. About okay. The, the I learned kids. some new stuff about the ship and the kids. Oh, tell me, tell me, tell me. So the director said that he made sure that he hid the ship from the kids mm -hmm. so that your first look was what we saw. Yeah, genuine. But Corey says, mm. being the badass little kid that he was, he snuck onto the soundstage no. and he saw it before they filmed. Apparently, he might be the only one that did because sure. everyone else says, like, no, that was the first time we saw it. Yeah, because I heard uh, Josh uh, cussed in the first take. He's like, he oh, did. shit. He said, oh, shit. And they <laughs> were like, all right, cut. Bitch, you fucked up the whole thing. There's not supposed to be cussing in this shit right here. All right, wrap it. Do it again. So it's a children's film. Yeah, Re he's like, I'm like 18. How old is he? Like 16, 17. There's, there, we're gonna talk about that. Okay. There's, I have some qualms with that situation. Okay. Yeah. So actually, let's do it. Let's talk about Bran. Let's go. Might as well. So, uh, Bran is played by myself. No. <laughs> <laughs> Tonight, yes. Tonight. Uh, is played by none other than Mr. Josh Brolin. Never heard of the guy. Never. Right. You know, mm -hmm. I don't know. He, Only movie I've ever seen. Some old man don't have a country. <laughs> he doesn't have a country. Uh, he hates milk, I heard. Does he? Yeah. Like, hard oh, Yes, you know, might have been Oscar nominated you know, for being a hateful bastard. Hateful bastard. So yeah. we have talked about him. We, we did talk about him. Go see our milk episode. My favorite movies of his, personally, Old Boy, which is a spin-off uh -huh. on uh -huh. Japanese... Okay, I've seen both versions. He's, I haven't seen the Japanese version. I've only They're seen They're both hits. intense. Okay. Yes, it's fucking dark. He does a really great job, though. Yes. He does. Uh, American Gangster. Yep. Of course. Yep. And Thanos. Got it. I, I, I like his version of Thanos. I think he did great. Is there other th versions of him? Someone else did? I mean, it? comic book, cartoon. Oh, okay. I think he know. did a great job. He has a very sexy, like, scary man voice. I like mm. it. I like it. He does a great job. Mm-hmm. And yeah, we talked about it in Milk. So my confusion, hear me out here. This was his first acting job. Yeah. Okay. He was born February 12th, 1968. Okay. The Goonies was released June 7th, 1985. Okay. As the story goes, he took his first acting class as a junior in high school, mm -hmm. did Streetcar Named Desire afterwards, and fell in love with acting. Was he Stanley? Oh, he was probably a good I Stanley. I think he was Stanley. Yeah. He was probably a good-ass Stanley yeah. Kowalski. Yes! Okay, go but ahead. But hear me out here. He's a junior in high school. If you're a junior in high school, you're between the ages of 16 and 17. This movie came out in 1985, which means they shot it at the latest in 1984, okay. which would make him somewhere around 14 or 15. So which one came first, the chicken or the egg? Now, that being said, he is a second-generation actor. His Both his parents were actors. Like I know them? Not really. Okay. No. But, you know, he didn't want to get into the business until his junior year. Because Streetcar does that. Mm. I fell in love with Streetcar in high school, too. And 
it changed my fucking life. So I could definitely see that being like but, some deep ass shit. Gonna, but but the math ain't mathing. The math is not mathing. Mm-hmm, yeah, because mm-hmm. February 1968, 78, 70, like that would make him 15. Maybe he was a smarty. And so 15 means he's a junior. Maybe. But, but he a big ass 15. Yeah, old. he looks like he's 19. <laughs> I thought the fool was 18 deaf. Me too. Like He's working he, out. Like yeah, he's, got, he's got a life. I know it was the 80s, but he fuzz. looks like a full grown man simultaneously. You know? I mean, he does. He also just, you know, flunked his driving test. <laughs> I mean, he, he looks exactly the same, except he has facial hair sure. now. So. so that's my only beef with it is like the math is not mathing as far as how old he was when they first filmed this. Then I'm thinking the math on his birthday is wrong. Or he you, started school early. Now, you know how actors be and they be messing up their ages and stuff to seem older, seem younger. Mm, they're going to hold him back for a year so he's bigger for Frost Child. It's, yep. <laughs> and like, you know how Eighth they... Eighth grade ain't so bad, is it, son? You know how you just... <laughs> you got to lie about your age. But he can play tight. I lie about my age. Not you. I lie all the time. You do. But I'm not going to call how you. How old are you? Uh, my uh, casting age is between... <laughs> not what I asked. But okay. Yeah, so... I don't know. Mm-hmm. That is weird because he looked old as fuck. Hell of a job for his first acting job, though. I think he did great. He did a great fucking job. He was cute and kind. Mm-hmm. And he was funny. I would have thrown like Mama Fratelli off the side, though, simultaneously when he went diving in for Andy. I would have been like, whoosh. Yeah. Whoosh, mm-hmm. Boom. Done. Nobody's got a gun. Get the gold. Let's go. So throw Mama from the boat. <laughs> is, that what she, is that what she's saying there? Yes. <laughs> 100%. We about to throw mama from the boat? That's <laughs> fucked up. She keeps getting thrown off of shit. If y'all don't know what we're talking about, you better ask somebody. You better ask somebody, because that movie is pretty funny. It's so good. Daniel DeVito. <laughs> Last thing I'm going to say about Mr. Josh Brolin is that uh, they fuck up his name twice in this movie. I do know one. Which one? It's the one where he's just like, there's nothing under the ground. And he's like, yes, there is, Josh. And then Data does it also. He calls him Josh. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and that's, uh, I want to say... When they're up in the attic. It's either when they're up in the attic or it's when they're fighting over the fake $50 bill. $50 bill? Yeah. No, it's not. It's fake. No. It's fake. They're bogus. No, no, it's not. <laughs> yeah. I got a question for you. Mm-hmm. Who's your favorite character in this? Data. Data? Okay. Yeah. I can agree with that. Babe, who's your favorite character? Of course it is. He's <laughs> Chunk is great. Chunk is great. Because I do like Chunk because he has his own little story off to the side. He absolutely does. And Chunk won uh, the Saturn Award for Best Performance by a Young Actor for this movie. I love it. I think he did a great job. Mm-hmm. He's such a cutie. Cutie little Chunk Chunk. Me and uh, my brother, Joe, used to rewind certain parts of this movie just so that we can watch Chunk redo his lines. What, what was the rewriting? Uh, when uh, the mom is like, what is that? And Chunk just wrote, oh shit, what? So you just, just rewind, oh, oh shit, shit, what? Oh shit, shit what? <laughs> Little fat Chunky. And of course the truffle shuffle, of course we rewind. Yeah. Also or- Captain Chunk. I mean, yeah, because he came through. He came and saved him. Uh-huh. Had his little captain hat on. Absolutely. Captain Chuck says, let's get the hell out of here. <laughs> hell yeah. So are we going to talk about uh, Jeff? Yeah, we're talking about him. Mr. Chucks? Mm-hmm. Absolutely. He did his thing. You know, he uh, he hit all the, like, the big shows at the time. Uh-huh. So he was on uh, Family Ties. Uh-huh. Webster, uh-huh. Kids Incorporated, uh-huh. uh, what's it called? I, I forget the other one. All of the shit. But like, yeah, he was he was hitting the spot. He was making his rounds. Yeah. And when he got this job, mm-hmm. like a week after he got this job, he got chicken pox. Mm-hmm. But he was too scared to tell anybody. He's like, bitch, I'm gonna lose my job. So he just kind of went on set anyway. And you can see some of the chicken pox when he does the truffle shuffle. Once you know, you know, and you see it, and you can't unsee it. Yeah. Um, but about the truffle shuffle, he he originally went out for mouth because 
he's like the mouthy kid. That's okay. what he auditioned for. They're like, we love you, but you're you're giving us more chunk because you're a little chubby kid. Chunky. So he was like, okay. So he did it. So when they had him do the trouble shovel, uh, Donner was like, just get on the stump and lift up your shirt and like make some noises and movements that would make your friends laugh. And so Chunks was like, okay, but like I need you to clear the set. And so he cleared the set of everybody because he was really self conscious of his, his body and everything. And so he just wait. All, so mouth isn't really laughing at him. I don't believe so. I don't think so at least either. not with the it, shirt. It up. never made sense to me the way he was laughing. Like if I was Corey Feldman, I'd be laughing my fucking ass off if I saw that. Yeah, that's probably because they didn't see it. Yeah. So he does it. Oh come on, guys! And he does his little shuffle. By himself on set because he was all worried about it. Um, Poor thing. And so, like, this kind of just kind of traumatized him a little bit. Sure. And gave him the body anxiety, and he stopped acting shortly after doing Goonies. Like, a couple years. Like, he didn't... He, he acted for, like, another five, six years. Yeah. He didn't make this but, his, his career. Yeah. He, he went to school. He used this money to go to yeah. school and to become a lawyer, and he is a fucking entertainment lawyer. Yep. With, do you know who one of his clients is? Oh, I know who one of his clients who? is. Who? Uh, your boy, uh, Ki Hui Kwan. Data, his motherfucking short round self. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they're still best friends to I this think, day. I think that, you know, when you were reading their little mantra, their, their mm-hmm. oath. They took it seriously. I think they took it seriously because the yeah. cast as a whole, as adults, seem like they all still get along. They don't hate each other. No. There was never any like, fuck that bitch. Like, I think that if there was a script for a part two, everybody would be on board. Okay. Okay. You know some shit I don't know. I know nothing. Okay. But but you know you know how my wheels be in these hands, how they be turning for sequels and shit. Good enough. So, I mean, <laughs> I, I, I want to get onto it, but yeah. like we can... We could get there in a second. Yeah, but hear me out. So, uh, yes, they are still, uh, especially Jeff and Key. Mm-hmm. I think uh, because uh, Jeff was little, the little fat boy, yeah. you know, Data was the little Asian kid. Mm-hmm. They didn't feel like they quite fit, fit in, in as yeah. much. They, I think, gravitated towards each other, and they are still best friends. That's so, so like, Jeff was backstage when when, he won? when Key won his uh, person that he hugs was is his Jeff. lawyer. He like <laughs> tackles him uh, backstage. That's so cute. Yeah. So yeah, I love that. Well, Jeff so doesn't. He much. ain't Chucky no more. He's no, no, he's and fine, looking ass. <laughs> Can I tell you a funny thing? Him and Vern, dude. Him kids, and Vern. Kids that play chunky actors end up growing up and being all. Is Jeff married to a fucking supermodel too? I don't know. Jesus. Okay. Well. Jeff Trip McNeely. He, they let him <laughs> improv some of his confessions. He confesses to okay. the gang. Okay. Obviously, the fake puke is not him. That's Steven Spielberg. No, that's Spielberg. But he, his confession about uh, pushing his real sister Eddie. Oh. Uh, she she is really his like sister. He did not push her, but he used her, her name and. He really does have a Uncle Max. Now I don't know if he took his toupee and wore it as a beard for Hanukkah, <laughs> but we only have old Hanukkah decorations in our attic. <laughs> <laughs> this is great. This is great. <laughs> but he did add some some realness. If I was his sister, I would definitely be never around stairs with him because I'm scared. And to help him cry in that scene, he thought about his mom being killed. Yeah. But she was not killed. She was not. It was just. The, it was just in his head, so he the could get the tips. It actually, like happening. And you actually get to see his mom in the movie. Mm-hmm. She plays his mom. So cute. Which once you see it, you're like, yeah, that's your mama. I mm-hmm. always thought that they got pretty good From parents. What's going down episode? Of that's my mama. <laughs> exactly. She brings him some dominoes. She brings him. Some, yes. <gasps> Can I talk about that? What the dominoes? Is it like product placement or something? Uh, yes and no. Because that's so random to just bring up. Well, it has to do with uh, Corey Feldman, actually. Okay. So if you notice when Corey is, like, messing with the fish and they're calling uh, Vern uh, Chunk out for his lies. Come on, Vern. He's like, and I suppose it was even more amazing than the time you ate your weight in Godfather's Pizza. If you look at him, his lips don't match with saying Godfather's Pizza because he originally said Pizza Hut. And so Pizza Hut 
did not want to be associated with the movie. This... So because of such, he had to do the voiceover, which is why we got Domino's in the because van afterwards. This happened again in Poltergeist. Remember we had a whole thing about like them talking about the pizza and they had to like dub it and change it because the pizza company didn't want to. And you remember it cuts really weirdly. Mm. Because I, I was drunk that day, I don't remember. Whatever, but <laughs> yeah, we yeah. So I don't know. Pizza, don't put it in your '80s movies. They have problems apparently. Right? It was in Mac and Me. I remember on the <laughs> DVD they were like all about. See, they chose Mac and Me over Poltergeist and over Goonies. Pizza had kind of fucked up. They fucked up those two bangers you put down. I can't knock their pizza though. At the same time. Every Wednesday, I got excited when Pizza Hut came to school. <sighs> nobody pizza the hut. Got, and nobody pizza the hut. Mm. They had that thick crust, mm. the fat pizza. I liked it. It was good, <sighs> but that was that was the thing about that. That's funny. Mm. Okay, do you want? No, I'm just gonna give you one. Give me one. So let's talk about Willie's boat. <gasps> okay. One eye Willie boat. Now let's just say. This really happened, and us in the 80s kids found Willie's boat, and we left with a a bag full of jewels. Mm -hmm. We could definitely keep that. Yeah. And and we can keep the boat. Finders fucking keepers. That's what I'm saying. Like, what do you think happened in theory? Like, if they were to make a part two, they got to justify what happened to the boat. Oh, my God. Are you ready? Finders speed, This is Zenobia's. Take on it. Okay, All right. here hit, we go. Hit me with it. Okay, so I had to do a little research, but the International Maritime Savage Law <laughs> says finders keepers. <laughs> in so many words, uh, hereby any person who helps recover another person's ship or cargo in peril at sea is entitled to reward a compensation of the value of the property saved. So. If you happen to find a ship, pirate ship, floating in the water, and you save it and you do the stuff, if nobody owns it and shit, that's yours. Even if they do own it, they still have to, and you come, they come for it. Equal value. They still have to give you something of equal value. No one owns that fucking ship. You're looking at the richest people in Astoria. You are. Because they own all that historical shit, all uh-huh. of these jewels and rubies Bro. and gold and diamonds, diamonds, <laughs> all of the stuff. Okay, <laughs> pearls coming out of the mouth. Oh okay? my god! <laughs> so my take would be, it's twenty something years later, thirty. I guess we're at like thirty six. Spent it all, <laughs> and and Mikey has kind of turned into his dad. Mm-hmm. He's the historian of the town. He's been looking for that boat because it went out and they could never like really find it and tow it back. Uh, but now he has kids and he's been telling them all about Willie's boat and all this shit. And they've daddy crazy. He dumb. He always be blah blah blah. But then they really go out and they find Willie's ship. That would be my Goonies. And you gotta get the gangs back together. I was say, you gotta get the gang back together. But wouldn't the Coast Guard just recover it as soon as they saw it? Look, you're putting too many holes in my, <laughs> my plan here. <laughs> You're gonna sink my boat, okay? So I don't know. It could be we could work on it. But once I saw the maritime law, I was like, okay, so they own that. So yeah, they not only the things in your that little pouch that could have saved all that could have saved all of them anyway, but that whole ass boat. Like him and Data have been sitting there this whole time trying to f- figure out how to get this boat, or maybe it sank, and now we got to go down and I don't know. I don't know. Data's a famous inventor by now. Yeah. He over Killing here. it. Spending months and months and months studying. <laughs> studying. Bet them. People don't, don't care or respect his shit. No. That or he's a secret agent. I don't know. Uh, ooh. ooh. Hey. Is he 0070? I don't know. Cause he's like a kingsman? Kikwe Kwan is a trained fucking assassin damn near. Like, he's the nicest guy in Hollywood, but he can whoop your ass. Come at him? Don't come at him. No, he was... Uh, so he stepped away from acting no. for 20 years. Correct. During that time, he was a fight coordinator. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so like, don't come He's at working him. on like X-Men and teaching Hugh Jackman how to be Wolverine. He taught Wolverine? Yes. Well, well damn. Uh-huh. I love it. He's bad. He's bad, man, my jammer. You see his, I'm, I'm sure, I'm assuming you've seen everything everywhere all at once. Yeah. So... That was originally supposed to go to Jackie Chan. I'm glad it didn't. And Jackie Chan turned it down. Like he's 
essentially retired. Chucky, he don't yeah. need no money. He rich as fuck. No, exactly. And this is right around the time that he has decided to come back to acting. I know this is his last. He was like, this is it. If I ain't getting this, it's one of those. No, he did uh, uh, Finding Ohana right before. No, I know. But like, I did read that he said that, you know, yeah. before he went for this, he was just like really down. Like, oh, I yeah. don't even want, like, if I'm not even going to start getting this stuff, then like, I'm going to retire again. Yeah. Because the whole reason why he came back is because he saw Crazy, crazy Rich Asian. Excuse we, me. I had a couple love... baby roots. Uh, and he, he stepped away. Because he wasn't getting any roles. Mm. As an Asian man, he was not getting cast in anything. Mm-hmm. Meanwhile, he's seeing his goony brothers, yeah. Josh and Corey and Sean, just like skyrocketing into superstardom. They're like, you're becoming a hobbit and a fucking hitman yeah. and some shit. His last movie was Encino Man. Sean Astin is the lead. I love that. He has a tiny bit part in it. He does. You know what I mean? So how do you go from Data and Mikey... To having one scene in a whole movie. Because this, right now, we are living and seeing the Asian renaissance in film. Which I love to see it. it. I love to see any people of colors have Mm -hmm. their their moment to shine to tell their stories and to have their their artists be focused on. So I'm all about it. Absolutely. When I saw he was in it, I just kept going, fucking short round is killing it. (laughs) Hang on, we going for a ride. (laughs) So, yeah. And he's a... in the new Loki in this he is. season yeah, two. Yeah, he's got like five, ep- six episodes He's so in there. cute in it. He really I is. Seen it. Yeah, I like it. I like seeing his Instagram post because every time he comes across like somebody famous, he acts, he takes a picture like he's the most excited kid in the world. He always is like this, just pointing at him. Look what I just saw. <laughs> I'm going to start doing that. It's so good. I've been coming across more celebrities and I don't take pictures or talk to them, but I think that I'm going to. You I'm, living in LA now. I'm gonna fucking. They're walking down my streets when I'm looking bummy going to the store, but I'm still gonna. I'm still that may doing be the it. last time you see them, though. That's true. That's true. I don't know. I don't like bugging people. There's a few people that I'm gonna go out of my way to be like, I had, I had to tell you. Yeah. But I uh, say hurl. Yeah. If you blow chunks and she stays, she's yours. <laughs> if you spew and she bolts, it was never meant it's to never be. Been. So yeah. I'm glad that we get to see more of him and mm-hmm. his beautiful face and his awesome energy. Absolutely. So that's Love it so cool. much. He's got uh, some projects in the works and we can't wait to see them. I can't wait. No, I can't wait. Mm-hmm. He did do uh, American Born Asian as well recently, which is a take on his career. Because uh, he did uh, two seasons of a like high school show in like the early 90s and then nothing and now it's like they're trying to revamp the show within the show and he looking back 30 years later doesn't like the character that was portrayed back then and he mm, feels like he's like selling out yeah you know what i mean so he's got this huge conscience conscience conflict okay uh, we got two people oh wait no 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 shit the fratellis we gotta talk about the Fratellis. Let's talk about the Fratellis. Yeah, the guy that tried to sing. The fucking... Bimbo de ore ah, ah, ah. You're like, Ma, you never let me sing. He's just so loud and... Dude, Robert Davey plays Jake. He plays Jake. I love the brothers so much. Him and uh, Joe... Uh, how do you say his last name? Pantoliano? Pantoliano. Pantoliano. Francis. He's just I, like Mama Francis. He never let me finish anything. Which, I mean, okay. Their relationship is hilarious. You know, it's like the blue rivalry. You know, the, mm-hmm. the the love that they want to get from their mom. Absolutely. They're, They're just competing for their constant. mom's affection. That kind of is because it's real. What do you mean? They really didn't like each other. They knew of each other and okay. like probably have run across each other prior to auditioning for this movie. So they never were really that close. They kind of didn't like okay. each other. And for some reason, they end up having like a group audition with yeah. the two of them. Yeah. And Robert makes some like sly mean joke about Joe saying that like, oh, you know, he's bald on there because he had his toupee on. And so like Joe like has like a, a slick comeback okay. and he's just like, hey, you know. 
I got it so I could play younger if you need it. So he like moves it up a little uh-huh. bit, like, you know, and everyone kind of laughs at that and they go back and forth. And so like that's kind of how yeah, they... they got cast, which is why that, you know. So the fact that they really didn't get along is why they cast them as brothers together. They're brothers together. That's awesome. So that's also why the two pay jokes are in there is because Robert really did I don't wear it. a hairpiece <laughs> except where he was just like bats the bats and he takes it off or Watch when he's face, like, <laughs> or when he's swimming like he takes it off and it's holding in his mouth and he's like swimming like you know they make it a whole joke and everything uh, it's so good I'm not the biggest fan of Robert though I f- like Robert in, oh, okay in doing like research into this mm-hmm. I feel like he's a he seems like someone that I wouldn't really care to like hang out with. That's just me. I don't know the man. Yeah. But like he nailed Joe's dressing room door shut so he couldn't get out. Uh, He also pulled Jeff's hair during the confession scene to like make him cry. So like he's sitting there pulling the back of his neck hair to like make I'm like, dude, what the fuck? What what kind of person is just like kind of torturing kids? He's like and, really torturing. Him. Like yeah, we'll like get he's the performance out of him. He didn't really sound like the the nicest ass dude, and I didn't hear the kids say anything nice about him or like talk about him. Period. So I don't know. I don't I've know. Never worked with him, so I can't. I don't speculate. know. I can't. Uh, I will. But say he seemed like a tough dude. You can get away with a lot of shit in the eighties. In the eighties, you no. Know, uh, <laughs> that was just. It was more. Just acceptable. Yeah. You know what I mean? It was a different time completely. It's literally 40 years ago. They <laughs> filmed this thing 40 fucking years ago. Oh, um, you said things back then. You did things back then. And uh, nobody turned a blind eye. Nobody turned a blind eye. But Jeff, yeah. like Robert tried to be like, oh, Joe did it. And Jeff was like, no, bitch. I know it was you. He's like, he's a fucking liar. A Frankly. child, child hair pulling liar is what he's called him. Oh, my God. <laughs> I was like, oh, okay. Yeah. So. I do know that he has worked consistently Forever, yeah. for all these years. Yeah. And so I can't, you know, you, you usually don't get far in this business. If you're too much of a dick. Exactly. True. You know, so. But he, you can if you're good at what you do. And he is good at he what he does. He is good at what he does. I give him that, but you know, he pulled a little even kid's Lindsay hair. Lohan, a little fat you know, kid's hair. Didn't get away with it for too long. Not too long. No, but, I mean for a long time, for but a not while. forever. Yeah, for like five years. You know, eventually they pulled your card, and so you either on the bus or off the bus sort of situation. But Joe is forever old. Like this dude has been bald since 1983. <laughs> Like, for real, yo. He hasn't aged him and Ed Harris. I mean, like, yes, I do, as a kid, remember him in this movie. Mm-hmm. But, like, to me, he's always yeah. bad boys. Well, what did I say? Did you hear you what, what I said? said? I, I heard what I said because I, I was there when, there when I said, said it. <laughs> I told you. Do you yeah. want me to yell at you? Because I can do I that. Can, no. <laughs> yeah, that's what I always think of he him as. But he looks the same. Or you know the Matrix, like he. Yeah. That is like absolutely. what what Ignorance I think is of. Bliss. But yeah, you're right. This motherfucker been bald since 1984, <laughs> and I I love that he just kind of went with it, and you know he has his toupee sometimes. He doesn't have his toupee, and even when he's like, how old is he by this like movie? I don't know. Is he like? I, he may have just gone bald early. That's what I'm saying. Like he he seems super young because he's not. He can't be incredibly old right now. But no, like, I wouldn't He think seemed so. like he's like in his early 30s probably, and he's already going bald. And he likes – he makes a joke about it. He's he's not all butthurt that, you know, they made that a big punchline in the movie. Like No, I think he has fun with it. Like I love bald. it. It is what it is. I love it. You he's know? so good. He's funny even when he's not 1951. So by this time, he was like 32, 33. See? Early 30s. Early 30s. Gone. Gone. You're good. You're I'm past, good. You're, you're good. Yeah. Let me see. I had, it's, no, still, it's, it's not a toupee. I had Ashley worried because I had like a bald spot back <gasps> here. But that thing's been there since I was like 12. So you've been going bald since you were, t- <laughs> since you were 12? Maybe one hair a year. like <laughs> It's one hair no, too many. It, it's a scar. I, I had a bike fall on my head when I was a kid. 
So this makes That's why I so call it over. I just call it over, see? Just this like makes that. so much sense on what... If I go like that... Oh, I do see it. I see it. But <laughs> otherwise, I'm good. This makes so I much... don't wear a hairpiece! This makes so much sense of why you are the way you are. <laughs> why I comb my hair the way that I do? No, the bike fell on you, so. Oh, that's fucked up. I love you. You're my favorite. <laughs> I loved uh, you. Okay, can I give you a fun fact? Mm-hmm. Let's talk about the real star of the movie. Cindy Lauper. No. Damn. <laughs> Sorry, we couldn't talk about her, but we're going to talk about the house. The house? Yeah, oh, the house is the house. safe. Okay. okay. I would really like the house clean when they tear it down. When they tear it down. That's <laughs> that's my mom. That's totally my mom. They're like, mom, they're going to literally... La casa de locos. They're Dios. really going to throw... Like, knock this thing down. Yeah, but, like, clean the floor bases. I don't want them to see it. Like, like oh you know, that would be my mom. <laughs> Can't do it. Okay, so the house was built in 1896. Wow. That's how old this house is. Like 80 years old, 90 years old at the time? Yeah. Okay. And so it was filmed at 368 38th Street in Oregon in, what is this? Astoria. 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 That's what it was. In Oregon. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so this house, they not only filmed on the outside, but they filmed in the inside too. Mm. Everything but... The attic. The attic, the was, attic was, uh, built? was a set. Mm-hmm. Okay. And so... You guys listen to me. Damn it, that's his stuff. That's his stuff. <laughs> now, this house has changed owner's hands multiple times. Apparently, it was like an older couple that owned it during the mm. time of the filming. And yeah. they came in and they had to do some reinforcing to the house to make sure that it was safe for the camera crew to come sure. all in there. Because this house is cameras so, are fucking heavy. This house was like close to 100 years old. Uh-huh. And then so. And it's on a hill in the it's first on a place. Hill, yeah. In Oregon where that it would just mud be raining. slides are real. It'd just be raining. Yeah. So uh, they did that. But the cool thing is, is that this year. The house went on sale. (gasps) And someone who we would absolutely love bought it. (gasps) Who? 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 You have no clue who this guy is. This guy is like a self-made man, businessman who, like us, grew up loving this movie. Okay. So much that he constantly was telling himself, like, if it ever goes back on the market, I'm buying it. If it ever goes back on the market, I'm buying it. And it did. And so not only did he buy it but he called up his oldest friend that he's been friends since they were eight years old and he said yo i'm buying the goonies house you should buy data's house next door <gasps> and he was like bet and so and they did it so now these friends will be living next door to each other again after over 37 oh, years of them living apart god i love that so much now this house uh, it reminded me of like me and you like yeah you're like i bought the house Get Data's next door. And I'd be like, yes, zip line to your house. I was going to say, you better zip line to my house. <laughs> zip line to I your house. I will always leave the screen door open. Please, please, please. If not, I'll call you on the walkie to open it. So not only did they do that, but this guy feels like he doesn't, this is going to be like his part-time home, not his full-time home. Okay. But he wants to restore it back to his glory. Okay. He wants to put the little, uh, data machine out front to open the gate he wants to redo and repaint the living rooms and stuff so that it looks like the movie I'll just, some things have changed like the stairs aren't there like sure. that but like he's gonna repaint the trim so I have a feeling that it's gonna turn to into like the Airbnb situation an Airbnb or like like the Christmas story house where mm-hmm. you could go and take a tour and it's like that I feel like it's gonna be something like that and you can also stay at the at the Christmas story house too yeah so you I feel like the Fresh Prince house not always but not always yeah, yes yeah. but definitely we can need to look out for that if we ever are awesome. going through Oregon yep another funny thing is is that people in the neighborhood they don't really like Goonies they. The fans are disrespectful over the years. Fans have come oh, and thrown trash oh, on the house or, dude, like, try to destroy dick. parts of the house. You know, people just being dumb douches and ruin it for everything. Every article I read, every video I saw about this house, the first thing they say is, be respectful. 
please do not fuck this up for the rest of us. Right? Just don't be a fucking asshole. If you go see this house, you cannot park or drive up the street. You have to park down the hill and walk up the hill. It's yes, like, you should. And somebody's home. Be kind and take some this pictures. This is a neighborhood. People live there. Yes. So there is a neighbor. So it's like the house, a neighbor, and then the other neighbor. The yeah. other neighbor has a sign that says, Goonies, not welcomed. And so I'm sure that owner has been dealing with it for I, 40 years. I get it. I, t- I doubt it. I doubt it. I feel like they these people moved here like 15 years ago. Like you knew you were on the Goonie Street, bitch, when you moved here. Mm-hmm. I don't I don't feel like these are the, the staying people. It could be. Could be. Could be. But I don't feel like it. Um, so she has the Goonies not welcome. And so the dude who just bought the Goonies house says had to put up a sign on his side of his house that said, all goodies welcome. And the house in the middle has a sign that says, don't listen to Karen. And the Aaron is pointing to like the, oh my the God. no Goonies welcome lady. So there's a little beef <laughs> going on in this neighborhood right okay. now. But Goonies never say die. So Goonies we'll see. never say die. We'll see how that Karen, turns out. sorry, you're going to lose. Sorry, Karen. I don't know what to tell you. Move. Because <laughs> we coming to see the house. Hey, Karen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Steph going to knock you out. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> I thought that was pretty cool. You know, that's I love, really love cool. the house. I love that. I thought you were going to say that one of the Goonies bought the house. That would be the coolest. Like if Jeff and Data actually, like, or Jeff and uh, Key actually bought the houses, that would be amazing. So Key gets, gets Data's house? I like this. Absolutely. Does he have a little girl with a little tricycle? Perfect. Right? That was his little sister who got, who got jacked. I want my <laughs> bike. I want my bike. We only, yeah. Mama Fratelli? Yes, Ms. you know who? Ann Ramsey? You know who I'm dressed oh, as, bitch. Oh, my goodness. What's your favorite line of hers? Kids suck. Kids suck. <laughs> <laughs> Duh. I know they're close. I can smell their bubble gum. The bubble gum. She's hilarious. Or I, she... I like that she's just like blunt, straightforward. I do yeah. like what she you tries to be. You always think aside, man. You always make them better. That's, That's right. right. Mm. She really hit him. She did really hit him <laughs> as he hard told, as she could. Yeah, they, she was told to hit him as hard as she could. Yeah, she fight clubbed him, and <laughs> it looks great. I do like when she's trying to be nice, and she's like, yeah, go be a mama's baby. Right. <laughs> Mama's baby on the trees up. Like, she's just so, she'll when try anything. The wind blows. Yep. I did hear that she was incredibly nice when the cameras were I rolling. I pray that she was nice, because... She only plays mean, she only plays crotch, mean. crotchety ladies. And you see ladies. her in the like behind the scenes DVD stuff. Uh huh. She's nice. She's sweet. She just happens to. Have I feel a like you have to be nice. Voice. As, I feel like you have to be nice and sweet when you're like Always on the set with the yeah. kids, but also when your persona is this mean lady. When you're playing the villain. Yeah, the Absolutely. ultimate Carol. Carol. No, that's that's not what. All right. <laughs> 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 Karen is what I meant to say. Yeah. I only dropped you once. <laughs> well, maybe twice. Well, maybe twice. <laughs> his eye. Yes. His eye is mechanical. It is, and so is his ears. His ears are mechanical too. You don't. Who, who can make their ears flutter like that? Yeah, he. I don't know. Well, he was uh, alfalfa. He could alfalfa could. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Uh, no, nah, but he was a, a ex. Yes, he was. Raider, Oakland Raider, <laughs> defense and bird. Yeah, defensive end. We ain't going to talk about his time in Houston. No, we only talk about the Raiders. <laughs> and it took five hours of makeup for him to every day to oh fucking do that. God, that and there was some sucks. dude who had to control the little droopy eye so that it would blink at the same time as his real eye. It was like a whole fucking That's thing. That's crazy. He couldn't get wet, and the kid splashed him, and he had to go sit for another five hours after they Jeez. splashed him. And he never once got mad at them. I would have fucking drowned a kid, but that's just me. <laughs> that's just me. Sloth loves Chunk. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Sloth, uh, Lotney is his official name. Lotney Fratelli. That's Sloth. That's Sloth's real name? name. Then where we get Sloth? Where does Sloth go? Sloth. Come? Like, Lot. I don't know. I don't know. Played by Mr. John Matuzek. Yes. That's how you say it. Mm-hmm. The man was 6'7". He was so standing next to these munchkin children. Ki Hui Kwan is 5'4 today. 
So he was maybe four something at that time. I mean, they do make him look even more giant. Yeah, and so is. is Sean Astin. Sean Astin is not tall. I think he's five four, five five. And so this guy who you said he was six foot. Mm-hmm. And Corey Feldman. Corey Feldman is like five six. Well, yeah, now, but like when they were As even, adults. So back then, when they were bebés. Sure, yeah, the tallest one was um, it was Josh. Josh at five ten. As an adult, so he was because he five, was not fifteen. Eight, I don't five, believe seven, this five, fifteen bullshit. I think he lied. I don't know, Josh. Come on, man. You get tell the truth. Tell the What's truth. What's going on? Tell the truth. Quiet minds want to know. Because I don't believe it. <laughs> you made me do the math. The math was a mathing, and I don't know what's going down. <laughs> but that being said, like he towers over these kids in this movie. And mama gave birth to that big ass. And she's like five one. Like she uh-huh. looks so tiny. <laughs> he picks her up and drops her in the water. As as he should. <laughs> Was that really her getting dropped in the water? Or did they have like know. a stuff double for her? I think they had dummies because when he swings down from the rope and picks up Mouth and Steph, those yes, are, are dummies. dummies. I mean he so. a big dude, but I don't think he could pick up all these kids and swing. That's a lot. Yeah, I don't know how you do that. You'd have to like tie it around your foot, hold it in your arm, and then grab him. It's just, it's not worth the risk. It is fun to see him do it though, because he's like singing the whole time. That's because (laughs) Sloth grew up on TV. I feel like they just locked him in a little somewhere with a TV all the time. They They chained him up. And that's why everything he says and everything he does is something off of. A movie. So yeah. all the pirate things sliding down. Mm-hmm. Uh, his Superman he's watching shirt. Superman, he's watching pirate. All right, my hearties, uh, follow me. Even hey, you guys. Yeah. It's not even his. Who's is it? Why? I'm glad you <laughs> set me up. <laughs> I did. <laughs> okay, so it is the opening line from the Electric Company. So we are a little young. We didn't really watch Electric Company now, as well. Here. Yes. Nowhere. <laughs> yes. We know a little bit of it, but okay. uh, the opening line is, hey, you guys. And Rita Moreno is the one who screams it really loud. Okay. And that's kind of what he's imitating is her. And then Morgan the Freeman show. pops out or what? Yeah, later. Okay. <laughs> yeah, later. Looking old, young. You know how he be looking. Absolutely. <laughs> so, so, I mean, I didn't know that every Very time I say. Joe Panta, however you say his name. <laughs> I don't remember. <laughs> if y'all don't know, Rita Moreno and Morgan Freeman were on The Electric Company. And they were in. So, and yeah. then they won Oscars. Oh, yes. Oh, well, she won hers before I know. she was on it. But yes. You know what I mean. <laughs> I'm sorry. You know how I am with yeah. facts. Uh, I will say uh, the last thing uh, about Mr. Uh, Matuzic is that he did die young. He did. He was 38 years old. Yeah. Heart failure, unfortunately. Yeah, like a couple years after this movie, like three, four years after. Yeah, not too long afterwards, poor thing. That does it. May God rest him. Mm. And he is immortalized in cinema history. Forever. And. And ever? And ever. Trapped. And <laughs> in the NFL. And in the NFL. In the credits. Yep. You know what I mean? My favorite character in the movie. Mouth. <laughs> of course it is. <laughs> I love Mouth. I think he's fantastic. I think Corey Feldman is fantastic. Old, young, teen, young teen. I love Corey Feldman. I think he's great. Me too. And so I think he has some of the best lines in this movie. He do. I especially love his speech when they're in the wishing well. And he's like, but you know what? This This one? one, This one right here. This was my dream, my wish. And it didn't come true. So So I'm I'm taking taking it back. I'm taking them all back. Fuck yeah, he is. Shit. How many times you throw a coin in there, your hard-earned lunch money, and you didn't get your <laughs> wish? <laughs> Meanwhile, some janitor person clean, scoops him up like at like 3 in the morning. Well, I mean, he, he probably needs it more than me. Absolutely. <laughs> some whole folk in the world. Yeah, yeah. I needed my money. I like that he wears a purple rain shirt. <laughs> like, he, he's he's funny. He's trying to do his Rocky impression. Yo, Mikey, you see Mikey. Yeah. He's a fun-loving guy. I think he did a fantastic job. I love that he, like, has his comb, and he's just like, hey, Mickey, hooking himself up. They, they used to, like, people used to carry combs in their back pocket in the 80s. Hey, man. I love it. It was a good time. He's got his members-only jacket on. He does have his members-only jacket on. <laughs> and also, you know, 
Hey, Mikey. Hey, Mikey. Got what's up, dude? Into the water. It's so good. And you're like, what the fuck? <laughs> Knock it off. You little mischief. <laughs> Fucking kid. But yeah, no, he is great in this movie. He's great in everything. We've talked about him in... Gremlins. Gremlins. Stand By Me. Stand By Me. Lost Boys. Lost Boys. And that's it. We will do a dream, a little dream one day. We will. And so, you know, if you want to learn more about him, because we've already, I've already drained all my we, facts. Yeah, we ain't got no fun facts. We just love him. That's not true. Uh, I got two. One, he hated the song Goonies Are Good Enough. Oh, really? He absolutely loved Cindy Lauper. Thought she was the best. He was a huge fan. They sit him in the office and they play the song, and he was like, "This is trash. Oh, this is the no. worst thing I've ever heard her <laughs> sing. Have her make another song. Sorry. She definitely wrote this song." Uh-huh. And this song is original to the movie. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, Corey didn't know shit because it went to number one. So yeah, everybody else thought it was good enough <laughs> for you. It's good enough. <laughs> um, and Corey also, uh, Corey, the Corys, both auditioned for Mouth. Really? And this is the very first time that they ever met was... In the audition for this. No shit. Yeah. Yep. That's awesome. Mm-hmm. And Corey got this role because he auditioned and got a role in E.T. Playing Elliot's best friend. Mm-hmm. But they ended up cutting that character out okay. completely. And so he got the shaft and he didn't get to be in the movie. But, but he was already in Gremlins by this time. Are you going to let me? Are you going to let me finish? I'm listening next so to the dots. He got the shaft, and Steven Spielberg felt really bad, so he gave him a nice little role in Gremlins. Gotcha. And then after working with him in that, he just was like, "Yeah, I need to give you like something more stuff." Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's okay. I got you. I can, just, I just remember I seeing like, him in okay. Gremlins. And I'm like, he's definitely way younger in he Gremlins younger. than he is in Goonies. I mean, okay, can I? 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 Well, yes. I didn't know shit, but she could have told you. But she could have told you some day day's ass. See ya. That's all I got on Corey. Okay. Well, then uh, we are down to our last Goonie. Mr. Sean Astin plays Mikey. Ayo, Mikey. (laughs) And I think he does a fantastic job. He is the fat hobbit. He is. He is Rudy. (laughs) He is. What was his name in Stranger Things? I don't remember. He's Mr. Stranger Things, season two. Season two. Bill Hurley in uh, Click. Yep, yep. You must be dad. Michael Speedo. Michael Newman. How you doing? So. Yeah. And we will do Toy Soldiers one of these days. Can we do a Lord of the Rings? We can do a Lord of the Rings. Absolutely. Shit, I read the books. A few books that I've ever read. Are you going to open the library and tell me some fun facts? Like the comparing? I'll give you, yeah, I'll give you the fun facts. Okay. Okay. Absolutely. I also listened to his uh, autobiography. I'm down. Sean Astin's. I do. And uh, remember what we were saying earlier, how somebody had been very present on the picket lines. That was Mr. Sean Astin. He, he has he been fighting seems for like the us sweetest actors ass. for a very long time. Because he's been working longer than most people have Absolutely. been alive. Absolutely. Okay, so definitely mm-hmm. he is a man of honor, and he's a man who always has a character. I never not like his character. He was even in 24 for like a season, and I was, was just he? like, I don't like your character, but I'm going to like your character because I like you. Yeah. Like, you know, like, he just has that. They like, try to make him an imperfect character in Encino Man, and you still like him. You still like him. Oh, he's so cute in that movie. Yeah. Like, yeah, he, he has had hits over the decades. Mm-hmm. But he got something really cool from this movie. What? He was allowed to take home the map. The treasure map to Willie's fucking treasure. And he kept it in his room. And then, you know, he did what we all do. We move out of our mama's house. You know, we go start doing our own thing. We forget about shit that's still left at the house. So when mama moved, she thought that that old burnt up bloody paper was just some dirty ass paper. And and she and she threw it away. Mm-hmm. It's It's gone. But I like to think that somebody stole it because they knew what it was and they hid it up in their attic and then they died and their kids are going to find it and they're going to think that it's a real map but really, it's the Goonies map. I want to talk to the prop department about this 
because <laughs> you know that there had to have been more than one map. E you make duplicates in this scenario, so I'm just wondering if there is a map lying around somewhere still. Okay, well then we need to talk to J. Michael Reba, who was made the map. He was a pro uh, production designer, and he burnt the edges. He poured coffee on it, mm -hmm. rubbed some dirt in it, and he was like, we need to put some blood in this. Yep. And they couldn't find any paint because they no one wanted to send nobody to the store. So they just cut their fingers and they put real actual human from themselves blood on this thing. So I don't know. Blood, if they, sweat, and coffee. <laughs> so I don't know if they made multiples of it. They but you, but always they do. always make you are a thousand percent right. There's always at least Especially one. Especially least there one. is a deleted scene of them burning the map. Maybe, that, maybe that's the one that the, it's not around. Well, they don't burn the whole thing. They just burn the edges. But if you're going to burn the edges on camera, you got to do retakes. Multiple. So you need to have at least five, six or whatever. Mm -hmm. True, true, true. Well, the one that he was given. Is gone forever. Is gone. And that was probably the hero one. Fucking mama. Mama, you never seen the movie? Weren't you there? I'm your only son, mom. How you going to yeah, do me like that? Weren't you there? You didn't <laughs> fucking know that was a prop. I, I'm sorry. I don't mean to be mad at you. This is like 30 something years later. Yeah. But still, it, it's gone yeah. like the boat. Yeah. I do like his monologue in here also. It's our time. Yeah. Our time down here. <laughs> it's all over once we go up Troy's bucket. Yep, he's right. Yeah. Our parents, they want what's best for us. But right now, they got to do what's best for them. Mm-hmm. Up there. He was laying it out for he them. He was doing it. And he, like, got, he riled them up. Yeah, like, everybody else is... Technically, everybody else is a goonie, even Steph. Yeah. She's the only one that he's got to convince. I say send her chicken ass up there. Go ahead. Have fun with Troy. I dare you. Okay. See if you don't cry yourself to sleep. I definitely would have been the one that went up on the boat. My biggest fear is to be trapped somewhere and just slowly die because I have no water or no food or nothing. Mm -hmm. That sounds so terrifying to me that if I was trapped underground with booby Moss traps. Garden wishing well. Yes. They got the water. Yeah, I'm not worried about, I'm just, there's booby traps. You know how many dead bodies, Smashly, how many dead bodies were there? It's part of the drinking game. There's tons. They're just sitting around. So some people weren't making it out of there. So I probably would have been up in the bucket. I, just Mr. Chester caught the pot. <laughs> <laughs> he was there. Yeah. yeah. He was there. He went in, but he never come back out. He didn't even make it that far. Yeah. He made it to the first booby, and he was trapped. Gotcha, bitch. Yeah, but, but yeah. he didn't have somebody like Data. That's true. Data, that's why I say he's my favorite, man. He's strong like Bran. Like, God put that rock there for a reason. <laughs> he's so right. I, I, you, you don't just go around just moving shit. You didn't have the tenacity of Mikey. Okay. So. I'm ready? out. Oh, okay, good. I got some fun facts. We'll f fun fact it up. Okay. Put it in a four-wheel drive and hold on to your hats. Okay. One, <laughs> the bats that come through the... Do the hole in the ground and in, in, in the caves. Mm -hmm. Not real bats, obviously. What's he, I know, he, Watch he, your face, Ma. He takes his, his hey, wig Hey, Mikey, off. if you can hear me, run. They're coming, coming after, after you. you. They're in my ear. And he <laughs> takes his hair off. Okay, so uh, they weren't really bats. They were black bow ties and paper that they just blew through a big cannon. Yeah. To make it look like bats. Which it's like an air compressor or something like yeah, that. Yeah, right? I definitely they got me because it always freaks me out. I always think it's bats. Maybe yeah. it's just because it's sound, the sound effects, bro. It's the sound. Some of the Steven Spielberg, obviously, he was a writer and he was an executive producer, but he did film two scenes in this movie. Oh, what did he do? One water slide. Our yes. red thing. Yes, I knew that he had to. He was like, no, not the water slide. The wishing well. So oh, all the okay. wishing well whole thing with the with the bucket. Mm -hmm. He did that. And he also did the scenes with the with the pipes. Okay. He did the pipe scenes. Gotcha. So those yeah, are a little Mike bit. Yeah, Mikey's been through here all right. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh. oh. Shoo, yeah, he doesn't. He like <laughs> crashes the the fucking cars. Yeah. Okay. So another deleted scene from this movie. Mm. When they are sitting there messing with the pipes and you know destroying the country club and stuff like that, it also messes up the pipes in the zoo. And two gorillas somehow get out because of this, 
And like a whole beeline story is like them running amok through the town. Oh, so like they steal a car and they like bust through stuff. They say Jumanji. Mon- yeah, they monkeyed around, Jumanji monkeyed around. Um, and Steven Spielberg had to film it because the director was like, I don't really like this. So if you really want this, you really want this in the movie, you direct it because I don't really fucking care about the shit. Yeah. And so when he did direct it, apparently the film got lost. Or maybe he saw it and thought it. Maybe he saw it. And he thought it was trash, and he was like, I "Maybe shouldn't, I shouldn't have wasted my time. Let me just burn these." Hey, Spielberg is not opposed to wasting some film, shooting something, and then saying, "Nah, it didn't work." Nah, out it so didn't well. work out. So just to ask back to the future. There are very small clips of just like the the gorillas in the costumes, mm-hmm. and there's like you know storyboards of them driving like a car through the stuff. So they don't mention it, but that could have been a whole weird part of this movie (laughs) yeah it would have been uh it would have splintered off too much it would have made it just some weird i'm I'm glad that they took that out i'm glad they took out the octopus Mm -hmm. i'm glad they took out the uh confrontation with troy in the liquor store and the liquor store yeah we don't need more of douchebag troy no okay we already hate him (laughs) yeah so we're good Mm -hmm. okay so the on june 7th 2010 is now known as Goonies Day in Oregon. In Astoria or just in Oregon? Or, in Astoria. Uh, sorry, in uh, all of Oregon or just Astoria? Astoria. Astoria. So you could go on this day and they give you tours of like the shooting location. So the house, the jail house, Mikey's dad's like Victorian like building job the museum the museum yeah, yeah all all of the and little spots they choose to be the new assistant curly curate curator that's what i said <laughs> yeah so that um the bowling alley where chunk was looking through the window oh wow a police so they took him on places of that okay. they had music and food and also they did an outdoor screening of the movie i love it and let's not forget Baby motherfucking roofs. <laughs> so uh, I'm still mad. I know. I know. <laughs> Don't need no more. So yeah. So if Fucked you up. are out there on June seventh, go go get your uh, Goonies on because Goonies Roof? never say die. Baby roof. Baby. His laugh is like fucking crazy. All right, last one. Hit me with it. Hit me hard with it. This one's gonna hit you in your feels. Okay. Oh shit. So in the novelization of Goonies, Chunk's family really does adopt Slaw. Wait, what? They really adopt him. You know, he's like, you live with us now. And he's Uh like, whoa, Uh yeah. In the book, the family really does adopt him. And not only do they adopt him, but they throw him a Bob Mitzvah. (laughs) Oh, my God. I kind of want this book. I don't. I've never seen it. I want to see it. Yeah, but I kind of want to read it because there's so many like heartfelt moments in this. Yeah, and that's definitely one of them. Yeah, and that makes me feel better because you're gonna live with me now. I'm gonna take care of you because I love you. Because I love you. I love you. And I always thought it was fucking hilarious because I'm fine. I was always like. His parents are like, nah, bro, he's not we living. Feed this giant. Big ass man. <laughs> Fucking big ass child man. I'm sorry. I don't know him. Hey, he this, can't. Is, this is a big family. They can, they know how to feed a big family. That's true. That's true. They, mean, there will be enough food. One more mouth is just one more mouth. <laughs> I mean, mama came with the pizza, so she already knew. Exactly. She already knew. She ordered it. My as boy's soon as been they, down there all night. He's got to drop five pounds. He's so hungry. They were like, we found your kid. Yeah. And she's like, all right, I got to stop by Domino's real uh-huh. quick. Uh-huh. <laughs> you said you'd give me a Twinkie. And now my mom's not going to let me eat my dinner. She's going to yell love at me. me. Oh, you guys. But uh, that's it. That's the Goonies. That's the Goonies. There were so many fun facts. Absolutely was. We did not even touch yeah. on all of them. Y'all, don't get on us about, like, if we didn't say your favorite fun fact that you knew and we didn't touch on it, we'd be here for seven hours. Don't act like, like I did. I mean, I knew it. I just didn't feel the need to write it down. Like, seriously, there's so much about this movie. There like, was. This is why we won't do Star Wars, because, you know, the fans are just... They'll attack us. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, what else needs to be said about Star Wars? People mm-hmm. already got their fun facts. Good enough. Good enough for you. It's good enough 
for me. You just me. setting me up with the song. Yeah, absolutely. I just see good enough for me. I see her yeah, on yeah, TV, yeah, yeah. on that do, do, TV, do, do, on the ground do, do, in the movie. Do, 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 every time I hear the song, she is in it. Yeah. It's a weird video, but yes, she's like works at like a gas station and she's trying to like fight. An octopus is an octopus is a two, yeah. And they like it's it's mm-hmm. all it's all eighties. Yeah. <laughs> I will say like they talk about doing a part two. There is an IMDB page for part two. I'm just saying, I already gave Cindy you a Cindy Lopper stepping... is signed on for part two. <laughs> to sing a song? I don't know. But she's on there. I'm just saying. I already set you up. We gotta find Willie Ship. You're right, Dana is a fucking billionaire ass inventor who's making smart cars right. and and AIs and shit. Something I gotta mention, his dad. Like, first and foremost, Ashley already knows that what uh Data and uh his dad say does not directly translate to what's in the captions. I'm sure they had problems. They had problems with the Spanish. Mm-hmm. That's why they asked they asked the actress Lupe to help. Lupe Antiveras. Yes. Yeah, we didn't mention that she's in this, but we she did is. It. Yeah, she helped <laughs> uh, fix the translation. So okay. I'm sure that they didn't have somebody like Lupe on the on the scene helping them out to translate it. Sure. Well, it says Goonies two, electric twenty twenty seven. They put some far off fucking year writer. Chris Columbus, same writer as part one, stars Cindy Lauper. <laughs> as one? Robert Davey. Okay. Sean Astin. Okay, yeah, you can't do it without him. Corey Feldman. Corey, they're, Corey they're, is shied on for anything. They are all signed on at this point. You can get Corey in one of your movies if you ask. I would love <laughs> to put Corey in one of my movies. So I'm saying. Let's find him a role. I want to meet him. Dude. Good enough. All right. Well, we made it, you guys. We, we it. did it. Absolutely. That oh. is our Goonies episode, and I had a hell of a time. This was a hell of a drink, it but it does. A... You got to drink it fast because it will curdle if you're not careful. It'll curdle. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Don't let don't let the ice melt on it. It's I'm... all good. It's alcohol, and you yeah. you be. Fine. I mean, I'm a little scared of it because, like, I'm scared of like. But it's like whipped drink. cream. Yeah. It's just whipped cream. And Bailey's. And Bailey's. I'm scared. You know, I'm sensitive. All right. Well. We talked about this last time. Big old bitch. Biggest bitch in the whole White House. I'm glad that you you say it and not me, because it sounds mean if I say it. <laughs> but you say it, that's fine. You sound well, too much like Steph. Okay, you guys. We made it. Thank you guys for watching and listening. Please tune in to us on YouTube. Follow us on Instagram. Uh, you can hear us on any... TikTok, Spotify, TikTok, Pandora, Spotify. Apple pl- uh, Podcast. You name it, we got it. You got it. We we own it. Mm-hmm. So um, thank you. Please email us if you have any movies or drink ideas mm-hmm. at lights, camera, cocktail, no S. Get that S out of here. At gmail.com. And oh shit. Huh? Are you ready for our Thanksgiving? Thanksgiving. Let's go. Thanksgiving does not have too many movies, but this one definitely... This is definitely a Thanksgiving movie, Thanksgiving and I love movie. it. And we're about to do this scene, and I apologize in advance. He he has the easiest lines, and I have the hardest lines. I have no idea what he's talking about. All Let's I'm going to say is, get the fuck out of here. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> I'm going to fuck this first one up, because uh, I'm still a little buzzed, and this is a lot of lines. You're a lot of lines. Thank you. Okay. It's hard. Uh-huh. It's hard out here for a pimp. When you try to make the money for the rent, <laughs> the Cadillac of gas money spent. All right, I got to get into this character real quick. Hold on. Let me take this shit off. We'll have a whole bunch of bitches jumping ship. Let me get angry for a minute. Just for a minute. When you say My cut, go back to angry. How may I help you? You can start by wiping that fucking dumbass shit. Let's go back. <laughs> that dumbass shit? Yes. And how may I help you? Sorry, I was still smiling. Okay. <laughs> Get it right. How may I help you? You can start by wiping that fucking dumbass smile off your rosy fucking cheeks. And you can give me a fucking automobile. A fucking Datsun. A fucking Toyota. A fucking Mustang. A fucking Buick. Four fucking wheels and a seat. I really don't care the way you're speaking to me. And I really don't care for the fact that your company left me in the middle of fucking nowhere with a pair of fucking keys to a car that isn't fucking there. 
And I really didn't appreciate walking across a fucking highway and down a fucking runway to get here to see you fucking smiling in my face. I want a fucking car right fucking now. Can I see your rental agreement? I threw it away. Oh, boy. Boy, what? You're fucked. Son of a bitch. <laughs> that poor man. <laughs> I like me. My, my friends, friends like me. me. <laughs> my wife likes me. People, I'm sorry for all the fucking. <laughs> you always get sorry for the fucking. Fucking sorry. Well, that's it. All right, you guys. We are out of here. We that did was it. a fun ride. Uh, I still wanted to go on the Goonies water slide, but that's all right. I'm going to build this one. All right. Sounds good. Can you become a billionaire so that we can have our own Goonies water slide, please? Like, What do you think it. I'm doing every day? Seriously. <laughs> so tell your friends about us so please. that we can make some money and build our own Goonies water slide. <laughs> we'll let you come. Yeah. <laughs> we made it. We're out of here. Yes. We'll get to see you guys for our Thanksgiving episode. Oh, my God. It's going to be a whole lot of fun. Gobble, gobble. Hell, yeah. Lights, camera, cocktail. Yep. All right. We're out. We'll see you guys next episode. I'm fucking drunk as shit. I love you. It was fun. See you on the next episode of Lights, Camera, Camera Cocktails. Goonies never say die, man. Goonies never say die. And kids suck.